intro time. I need people to tell me audio levels. Very quiet. Alright. Amazing. Alright. I'm boosting. I'm slowly there are, boosting. <laughs> there are five people listening to us talk about the audio levels. One of them is me. One of them is you. <laughs> it's okay. We have like 15 minutes while we can just sort of dance. And you guys can hang around. Um, I've muted. I realized that I, I was, I have the stream on in background, and I could hear myself. No extra fun. We're back. Still starting. But like one fifteen. Like doing until one fifteen. Why is this the schedule? It is our first uh, game showcase this year. We'll probably do another one at the end of the year, but this is the early fall 2021. So we can look at what people have done over the summer. So we can have some cool updates. This is a lot shorter than 
our last year's, which was two days, was it? It was two days. It was three days. Was it three days? One one day per year. No. First year's did one. No, we did two days. What? Fourth no. year's had a separate day. No. It was two days. It was... I don't think that's true. I was... think you have remembered incorrectly. Because if it was three days, then it, that math doesn't add up. I almost clicked the wrong button on my phone. But that's okay. Link the Twitch, please, Kyle. Please. Those are very lucky intro. Are they actually there? I know. Thank you, Alex. This is much stream. Alex, what are our audio levels like? Because I have no idea if they're good or not. Decent? What does decent mean? <laughs> Okay, hang on. Let me like play um, the Windows doo doo sound. I don't know if all my audio levels match, man. I haven't streamed on Twitch in like forever. The only time that I've used OBS since is to record game footage for. For stuff I'm working on. <laughs> That's my phone. I am a pro streamer. Might be the last year. I am still at home because I would love to do this at school, but you know, you can't do that. Not we have really. 15 minutes of intro? Hell yeah. I don't know why we have 15 minutes of intro, Alex. <laughs> I still gotta wake up. <laughs> my my cat was climbing all over me this morning. When did you wake up, Chris? Uh, like an hour ago. <sighs> Great. Had all my alarms set up. Oh, uh, reminds me, I can add in. Hey, it's early for me. Okay. Chris and Benny banter time. I refuse. <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not talking to this hooligan. He's he's sad that Powerline no longer has the bull in the underline. Uh, it's an injustice. It's a scam. Um, so how's this gonna work? Are we gonna be bringing people into this chat to talk about their game? Because I won't be talking about Powerlines. I have other people from the team who will be coming. Yeah, talk we'll be about dragging that. people in. Uh, okay. To the chat. Uh, I know I, there's a team that I know that can't that can't make it. So, but. But it's fine, and it's hilarious because they were telling me it's a fourth year. I'm just like, I was pressured into submitting it, and then I know exactly who pressured them in because they told me. And I'm just like, yep. And now no one's available to do it, so I'm just gonna play the game. I know a little bit it about works. the game, so uh, hopefully I can, I can maybe talk about it. But otherwise, yeah, there's gonna be a couple. Otherwise, we're just gonna we're just gonna play it on our own, and then like give some comments and like talk about it uh all the games that we will be displaying today is available in the in the itch link uh except for mushroom season which uh has been set to private for a couple of reasons that is on its game description uh, but we can look at it later and as well as one other game that isn't on the itch collection but is on game jolt uh but all those links benny, are in the game collection links yes where can we find the itch link benny they're in the about section in this twitch channel i did fantastic the i know they're not hyperlinked in any ways <laughs> can i hyper can i even hyperlink them i don't think i can gamejolt.com wait maybe games i can like <laughs> hyperlink the uh the, i can i can hyperlink the image oh did we can work? see our latest followers 
Yeah, we can. I, Our I latest can. follower is a member of GDS. <laughs> Dude, both of them are. <laughs> it is, you're Actually, right. that's really interesting. Um, uh, Adam... Uh, from our, our game prof Adam has also followed this channel. Which one is he? Is he skills? It's game level design. <laughs> <laughs> they He's also do. Watching. They also do streaming. I, Adam also does streaming. For, I can't. For games. I, I can't stock his channel. You can't. It's not his personal one, but it's it's the Sheridan one. The Sheridan everyone's, run one. Uh, everyone subscribe to Game Level Design for fresh content weekly. I can't even click on their name because it's not. It's just a fucking... Should I swear? Probably not. It's unhealthy. Yeah, you probably shouldn't say the fuck word on a school stream. I can't believe this. We're being exposed. <laughs> We're breaking... Are we everywhere. Are we saving this VOD right now? I... I oh, that's maybe. a good question. Uh, I think you might need to do it afterwards. I don't I think know. there's something you have to do before. And also maybe. Uh, it does say it does auto-save after. We just need to like maybe download it. I believe Kalen was working on something like that, but it might have been someone else. Uh, yeah, we'll save it. Don't worry. And then I don't know. Do we have to make a YouTube now? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe just a da maybe we just need a database because these vods are like and subscribe are huge. Don't like and th you can't like and well you can subscribe on Twitter, we could, but you can't like. We could request a space in the GDS vault. I'm sure that's a thing they could give us. I don't. The Google Drive is only so big. Link in the description. Click that bell. Don't click that bell. Don't do that. Click it or tick it. Did, if you guys you know, don't wear your did you know belt, that? Did you know that 30%, uh, that 70% of the people who watch my YouTube videos are, aren't subscribed <laughs> to the YouTube channel? Oh my god. We could just start early. We could start early. Are you just capitalizing on and you want 20 minutes? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's... That's sus. <laughs> That's suspicious. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here is... Don't not... forget to stream for me, Benny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, got, I still gotta set up. Don't look at Discord. <laughs> Don't look at Discord. I have things that you should probably see. But I do have the Discord overlay. I didn't have to change anything there. Things were still working. I don't know if that's gonna do. Mm. Who's on. Fred Duffield? Uh, it got another member of the GDS who is at work right now, or they would be in this call. It. This is catastrophe. <laughs> Let's talk about this game. Please tell me if you can hear any form of audio. This is. I forgot how loud this was for me. Uh, Don't worry, there's settings. Now. Look, there's settings. And I'll play on medium, because I was able to do so last time. Alright, let's talk about Catastrophe. We should put down bets on how many games are going to directly involve cats, because I feel like it's going to be a significant amount. I want to say at least three. Alright. I'm playing now. Talk about, let's talk about this game. What was this game for? So this was for the Brackies game jam, and uh, the theme was Let There Be Chaos. And so we were trying to think about what Hang on, I'm being got. arrested. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, and so we were thinking about what kind of games offer chaos, and so the first thought was obviously bullet hells are very chaotic. So we were thinking about how do we take a bullet hell, but like make it feel like you're letting there be chaos rather than it just starting with chaos. So basically the idea is that as you defeat these enemies, you're collecting this chaos liquid that your cats built that transformed all these cats into little monsters. Terrible boxing glove. Um, yeah, and so then when you go oh, to already? You get, <laughs> you get random can... power-ups from a list of power-ups, though there is some uh, balancing in there on like how many you can get of each of them. Uh, so you can't, like, some of the really bad power-ups, you can't get as many of as the good power-ups. Um, but all the power-ups interact in interesting ways, and each time you get them, they stack with each other. So, uh, Benny's just gotten a power-up that makes his own bullets hurt him, which, you know, not that bad right now, very hard to get hit by your own bullets. Uh, but, 
um, later you might get a power up that allows your bullets to bounce or move slow enough that if you're dashing you'd be able to run into them. Uh, and some of the power ups that seem really bad at the beginning of the game, such as your bullets going slower, wind up being beneficial by the end of the game. Because if you're shooting 30 bullets that are hurting yourself, then going slowly to be able to dodge them is really helpful. Uh, also, we probably won't get to it in this playthrough, uh, but there's also like a boss fight at the end of the game where uh, like some of the power-ups are like significantly more helpful than others because of just the nature of like, an open area boss fight. Alright, I believe I can get through. I'll try and get through as much as I can. Why cats? Why cats? Uh, a full playthrough on medium normally takes about an hour, so... Nice. We're going whole stream on just this game. Yeah. <sighs> Why do you keep getting these awful upgrades? Uh, <laughs> if you do just want to mess around, I'm pretty sure we left in the testing, uh, like, debug, where if you press R, it just gives you random power-ups, because being able to, like, play through the game to test out... Don't worry, all he's gonna the, die soon. All of the power-ups was too difficult, uh, and so I think we still have that debug in. If at some point you want to just mess around, give yourself a bunch of power-ups, try to see what the game is like later on when you're much stronger. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of, uh, like, roguelike vibes from this. Do you want to talk a bit about that and maybe some of the inspirations you had uh, from that genre in this game? Uh, well, it's not a roguelike, because when you die, you get to restart. Uh, we did consider putting in a roguelike mode. Uh, we didn't wind up doing that. Uh, maybe would have been too difficult. I don't know anyone that's been able to finish the game without dying. Uh, it just gets a little bit too hectic at the end. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know that there was any one game that really drew reference from. It was just kind of like wanting to make something that would, like, be cute and easy to, like, develop more on, uh, where, like, we, we, we weren't, we really wanted to make sure that we weren't developing a bunch of, like, unique systems, uh, so that's why we made it so that, like, all of the power-ups kind of interact with each other, so it feels like there are more systems than there really are, because one system interacts with others to create a third system. Interesting. So how many like unique enemies are there total in this game? Three. There are only three. three? Okay. Oh, well, there's three and then two stages of boss. Nice. So the first stage of boss is kind of the classic. They're the whole upper part of the screen. Um, and then the second stage of the boss, they become much smaller. And then they move really fast. Uh, the second stage of the boss is very difficult. But it's that kind of difficulty where it's oh. like, uh, you know that the... if you did it... I wish I had tacos! Any amount of health. Dude, now I really want food. This fucking room is awful. Ugh. Also, I have like no actual good upgrades. <laughs> yeah, you're. I've gotten you're shit. Having a, you're having I a do. Rough run. I do like how you didn't just stick with the idea of chaos being just kind of like you do more and are more powerful, but also that there's just more going on to affect yeah. you and it can be negative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, um, and always good, but it's also not always bad. Yeah, it's sort of an interesting concept that it looks like the more you play, sort of the less completely in control you are, which I think is yeah. a neat thing to develop around. Yeah, some things like uh, the adult beverage reduces your accuracy uh, gets really crazy later in the game, where uh, if you have like multiple shots, you can wind up where like some of your bullets are like going behind you if you're shooting enough of them with enough decrease in accuracy. So what are your favorite power-ups from this? Well, so essentially at the beginning of the game, there's a power-up that gives you more bullets per shot, so you shoot as like a spread. Mm. Um, so early Shotgun. game, that's like by far the best power-up. But the thing is, you do eventually, well, it's possible to not, but realistically, eventually you'll get the power-up where your own bullets hurt you, at which point the fact that you're shooting multiple bullets become super dangerous, especially coupled with a power-up that lets them bounce. So, yeah. if you have a bunch of bullets and they're all bouncing, uh, you're quite likely to hurt yourself. So the later you go into the game, the less the enemies become a danger, and the more you become a danger to yourself. Uh, and that's the point where some of the power-ups, like, 
lowering the move speed of your projectiles stop being like negative effects and become positive effects. Yeah. You can get yeah. all the way up to having like 11 bullets shot per shot, and if you have enough attack speed, you can basically just hold down. It's like a stream of shots. I think it's very interesting that like the, I'm just it, it, you know, the bullet hell idea is like sort of emergent. You know what I mean? Like I see it with this new enemy, and then the more debuffs you sort of have on you, the more of a threat you become yeah. to yourself, and that leads to sort of that bullet hell really yeah. having to dodge. keys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a really interesting concept that it like sort of it, yeah. it it develops as you play oh. into this new sort of uh, experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, here's the extra bullet, and then it's also there's a power up for increasing your dash okay. range, uh, which early in the game feels super useful. You can dash farther, and it is quite useful to have one or two of. But if you get up to having like eight or nine of them, uh, it becomes super dangerous because the bullet the the rooms become so full of obstacles and bullets that if if you're dashing across the entire screen, you're often dashing like into the fog of war. You don't know it's there, and sometimes you dash right into your death. I'm liking the the variety of enemies. Mm -hmm. So I I my part of this project was the level design, and so the first five levels are randomized from a set of five levels. It's always the same five. They're nice, easy levels to get started. Then the next five levels uh, are randomly picked from a set of ten levels, where each one has only one of the two new types of enemies. Um, and then levels uh, 11 through 15 are also randomized from another set of ten that include both types of enemies. Uh, some of those levels are actually arguably easier than these new levels, because we wanted to have more and more enemies appearing, so we made the levels bigger and bigger. Uh, and at the point of level design, it was just a, a week-long game jam. We didn't know yet that, like, the main strategy would be, you know, kind of just, like, spamming shots into the level. So having these yeah. big open levels actually kind of lets you sit at the beginning and just shoot from, like, safety. Definitely, uh, yeah. So the, the 11 through 15 levels, for the most part, are actually uh, easier levels than the uh, 6 through 10. Uh, except there's one or two in there that, that are genuinely more difficult, that are kind of more smaller levels with close turns and lots of enemies. Uh, and then the final five levels are also randomized, but only from a set of five again, so you always get those five. Uh, and then you have the boss fight that is always the same boss fight. So we're probably not going to get to the boss fight uh, no. in this playthrough, but what made the boss fight like special to you? What did you really enjoy about it? So the, the first phase of the boss fight is uh, your cat itself not a random mutated cat uh blown up really big top half of the screen and it's got a bunch of like unique attacks that were really fun to make and fun to play against uh from it shooting a like beam of shots essentially that follow you uh to doing a classic boss like hand slam down onto the map you have to dodge mm -hmm. doing a punch in from the side to try oh, to crush no. you or doing the spread of bullets um and, and the, this first part of the boss is is really enjoyable when you're playing it because often by the time you're at this boss you can kill that first part of the boss really easily uh, yeah it's super intimidating when you're looking at it but because it has such a big hitbox and you're likely shooting a lot of bullets that deal a lot of damage by the end of the game uh normally you can kill it really easily and it gives you this real feeling of like power like yes i've gotten so much stronger through playing this game uh and then it becomes, a, you've, you've ridded of some of the chaos, right? So it shrinks back down into being close to the size of a cat, and it starts the second part of the boss fight. And during the second part of the boss fight, you really get to feel the negative effects of your power-ups. Where in that first part of the bar boss fight, it's very hard for you to hurt yourself. So you get to feel how strong you are without really having the negatives that you've accrued. The second half of the boss fight, you have a much smaller enemy, about twice the size of the enemies that you're fighting now. Uh, that's zipping around the map and shooting tons of projectiles as it zips around the map. Nice. That's Which... a nice little twist, because I feel like most games tend to go for small lead-in boss fight and then really big, like, final boss fight, you know? Sort of like yeah. uh, Legend of Zelda style, where, like, Ganon's the big final boss. And I think by flipping that, you've mm -hmm. that's, like, decent challenge and some and, version uh, of expectation. This smaller boss, because it's small, it means that it's hard to hit it with all of your shots. 
so you're really, really likely to be shooting shots that are missing and bouncing off walls, and now you not only have to dodge the boss's shots, but your own shots as well. And then it becomes uh, like a real bullet hell, yeah. Yeah, and it also so, feels like when when you get to this boss, every time that you die fighting this boss, uh, you will have got it pretty low. It doesn't have very much health. You don't have to hit it a lot of times to kill it. Uh, so you always feel like, oh, if I had just done a little bit better. Maybe if I, in that first half of the boss fight, if I had dodged one more ability and I had one more heart, I would have been able to win the second half. Uh, also, the with the second phase of the boss fight, when you defeat it, it turns back into your cat on the map, and you win the game by going up and like colliding with pet. your yeah, give him a little pet, colliding with your cat. Uh, and so sometimes you'll be in the boss fight and you'll kill the boss, but you, there will still be so many of your uh, shots oh. flying around that you need to dodge them to get to the cat to be able to win. And I've seen people win the game where they had so little health that you couldn't even see the bar over their hearts anymore, uh, dodging through just a huge mass of bullets to uh, touch the cat to win the game because they knew they wouldn't be able to survive if they didn't get there. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. Oh my god, finally. I got another heart. I like the, like the sort of like, I guess, final phase sort of of the boss fight that's like the consequences of your actions and it doesn't involve yeah. like fighting but it's like hey surprise like there's still something you got to deal with i enjoy that yeah. uh remember if you're watching this twitch stream and frustrated at benny's lack of gamer abilities you can hey. download you can download this game and all the others that we'll be playing from our twitch description on I've the gotten... itch.io page you also uh, don't even need to download this one it's fully oh browser online. game yeah yeah, you can download it, I think, but uh, unlike most games that I've worked on as browser games, this one works just as well in the browser as it does on its download. That's because we were bribed by Google Chrome. This stream sponsored by Google it's Chrome. Uh, but yeah, Benny, <laughs> since we're getting close to the end, uh, can you click R for me real quick? I can't see! <laughs> you almost killed him. Yeah. But uh, if you want to click R a bunch of times, just so you can kind of yeah. get a feel for what the game is like Let me later. just get to like a better level that isn't... Oh my god, I just died. On these legs. Okay. Oh wow, Ben. Damn, spam R. Yeah. Gonna... Well, restart and then spam some R. I, I... But if you spam too fast, we'll just give you a bunch of the same one. We didn't really debug the uh, debug yeah. system very much, but uh, yeah. Is that uh, Shoes with Springs? Is that the dash one? Yes. Benny, do a dash for me. Oh, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Oh my god, I also got a bunch of the time ones, and they're all awful. This is really yeah. This, the, the this time is one, really painful. The time also, one. I'm yeah. really, I've been really unlucky because my upgrades have been garbage. <laughs> even I, just spamming upgrades, your upgrades are not great. Nope, I haven't even done a single extra one of the. Uh, like I got like a lot of mirrors though. I can like I think I can. Yeah, your bullets one shot everything now even so. me um the the clock in the end it when you get your first clock it doesn't seem that bad uh the clock is after you get hit there's a delay before you can shoot again uh which isn't bad the first time you get it because the delay is so small that it's smaller than the amount of time between shots if you don't have very many things speeding up your shots uh but by the time you get 11 of them, it's about like a three second delay uh, between shots if you get hit, which is very rough. It's already really rough. Oh, why you, might as well spam, you might as well spam yourself some more power-ups. You have basically all of the really bad ones already, so it only gets better from here. No, I just, <laughs> I, I just, this is all, it's all bad. No, no. So yeah, let me go through. So you've got the terrible boxing glove, which shoots you, knocks you backwards. You can get hit by your own bullets. You can knock enemies further. You can yeah, so the, the bad enemies. boxing glove is an example of one that seems bad when you first get it, but winds up saving you a lot of the time, uh, moving you away from your own shots. Or, or it like helps you dodge enemy shots. It winds up being quite helpful. Um, okay. Benny, that so this is what happens when you have like 20 upgrades and you have the, the bullet yeah. health doesn't actually become your own bullet health. 
Yeah, it's also, you get a lot of the things that slow your bullets down, so then they are existing longer on the map, and uh, you have, right now, Benny has four bounces, so they can collide with walls and bounce off four times before they go away. And you're just moving around the map way faster, because your dash moves you really far, your shots move you really far, and you really get that feeling of chaos coming out. It's nice. Though I will say, I'm not sure I've ever seen someone get such bad upgrades. I know! The first time I played yeah, it, I got like decently far in like a small amount of time, but this is the worst. We definitely wanted to look into a little bit more balancing of the upgrades, but it's hard because upgrades that are... Like, there aren't really upgrades that are universally good. There are a few that are like universally bad, but it's hard to, uh, to do a system where it's like for every two good upgrades you definitely get a bad one and for every two bad ones you definitely get a good one because sometimes the good upgrade actually is going to be more harmful to you than the bad upgrade would be ah. i can't shoot oh, no. I'll just do that. oh no they're all coming back <laughs> That's exactly what he wanted yep So this is an example of like a level that's like supposed to be harder, but uh, that that upper area is fairly open. So if Benny can get a good angle, which Benny's seeming to not be able to do, but a good angle to shoot bullets into there, you can kind of just sit in this corner and just let him go. I still hear, I still hear the bullets. Yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna... You have no health things, so be careful. <laughs> Alright, that was Catastrophe. Uh, anything else you want to say before we kick you out, Kyle? Uh, no, no, that, that's the game. I uh, hope everyone thought it looked cool, goes and tries it, try to get to that uh, that boss there. Yeah, our art and sound was by Taylor Ashley Pedro, I did level design, and Fred Duffield did the uh, programming. Uh, yeah, if you want to go check it out, try to get to that boss level, and leave us a comment, and we'll get back to you. Ooh, special Enjoy. thanks to all the members who worked on this game, and thank you, Ka Kyle, for coming in and talking about it with us. Awesome. Uh, luck with the next game. All right, here's the next one. It's no wonder in how right. we have played this before, but now I have to find the, uh, the actual game. Can someone, can you drag people in? Because they are. I don't know who made it. Uh, Scott did. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Scott. Hey. Uh, and hey, Ben. Oh my God. Hello. Hang on. I don't know which screen this is going to go to. Uh... Now, we did see this game, I believe, last year at the end of year showcase. Um... Yeah. So I'm kind of excited to see where it's gone from there, because I do remember it. It's a bit of a different game at this point. We've added a lot of new features. Um, I can see just from, the, just from the, like, I guess, quote-unquote graphics, or just like some of the sprite art, that it's very different from what we saw. Yeah. It's gone through a bit of an evolution. Mm -hmm. and, I do um, like the, the title, though. No Water oh. in Hell. Very catchy. <laughs> Thank you. I don't... Uh, is there audio? There is. There is audio, and you can change the volume this time. Uh, We've worked a bit on that as well. Nice. It's not showing in your Discord stream, unfortunately, Benny. Oh, that's because I'm not showing in your Discord stream. I will do it now. That's the wrong thing. Ignore me as I try and, like, sort through a bajillion things. There we go. Now, I don't know when you pulled your build of it, but we put a new build of it down last night. That should have some big bug fixes, but really any version that you show off will work for today. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yep. That UI is clean. I know, right? All right, let's talk about this game. Okay. Wow. All right, so tell us a bit about the game and um, act like we've never seen it before because... Sure. There's a lot of people who haven't. 
Oh my god, I can't believe I've been playing a second bullet hell in a row. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? So, No Water in Hell is a game we've been working on for about two years now. Um, it's mostly Sheridan students, but we do have some help from outside of the school. Um, we are kind of aiming for more like a roguelike experience. Uh, the difference being is a lot of games, like roguelikes especially, like to give you single hit hit scan like melee style weapons or blasters with like individual bullet objects. We wanted to go for something a little bit wackier I think because our game is kind of like a tongue in cheek uh, take on like hell um, abstractly. So we decided to go with a fire hose which kind of influenced a lot of our like uh, player design. So you play as like a firefighter who's fallen to hell kind of want to get out of hell and the only way out is to like work your way through hell and like well kill the devil that's kind of the end goal um so for on... all of us yeah <laughs> relatable um so you go through hell and you're spraying down demons uh, that's kind of our elevator pitch um but there's a lot of things that you can do now in our game um previously we didn't have shops which are now in our game i can see uh, that from the currency We've got items, we've yeah, got a revamped combat and economy system. Um, we've got health items, which I think you've come across. There are some known issues with it, but we're working our way uh, through it. Of course, yeah. I like This has and, come a long way, this is very interesting. Oh yeah, There's and also, uh, uh, the big thing now. is bosses. Yeah, so I, I gotta ask, because this is something I might want to look into on my own, but uh, do you guys have any, like, devlogs available on YouTube? Have you done any documentation available to the public? Yeah, so we have uh, we have our own internal documentation, but we've also got a Discord server where we've been doing, um, like, change logs or devlogs that we've mm -hmm. been posting on a bi-weekly basis to the public. So when we have big overhauls to our systems or new features that come into play or maybe bug fixes that we do, um, in a similar way of how you might see them maybe on a uh, third-party game site or on Steam. Uh, we have a similar system. Ours are a little bit more visual, though. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our own Discord server, and I'd be happy to provide that if you Yeah, if you like want to, to plug that, that in the Twitch chat for anyone who might be interested, uh, myself included, that'd be great. Um, it's also great for some of our, you know, younger, newer, first-year designers to see what some game documentation might be like and what you know, realistic game development might look like for students, so... The one I thing I would say... Oh, thank you, Ben. Uh, one thing I would say is the documentation or, like, the devlogs that we share to the public look much different than what we use on an internal basis. Of course, yeah. So while we might have our own, like, LDDs or our own art bible or narrative bibles, um, we won't be sharing that with the public. That's something we use internally. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the item pickups that we're seeing, and, uh, I don't know, I the economy that you've created through drops in this game. Yeah, so we have uh, coins and keys that drop uh, from all enemies, and uh, chests that you can find as well. Um, coins are used to buy items in our shops, uh, exclusively in our shops. They come in three different flavors, the yellow, the blue, and the purple, which, if I'm not mistaken, uh, are worth 1, 6, and 12. Uh, we've had a few overhauls of those numbers, so I may be a little off. Um, as you go through the different biomes that we have planned for our game, presently we have two, but as you go through, the cost of those items actually increase, um, regardless of what they are. Um, and then they're picked depending on the rarity of the item. Um, so there's like, I believe there's common, uncommon, uh, rare, epic, and I believe there's a mythic as well. Um, and then there's different categories, so those prices are also based off of the kind of item it is. Um, keys are much more rare than uh, coins. Coins will drop from just about every enemy and bosses as well, and then they have a chance to drop from chests. Keys, um, they'll drop occasionally, either just a key in a room, or they have a chance to <laughs> drop from walked into others. The water. <laughs> Here's Charon, he's one of our bosses that we have in. We, uh, we spent a lot of time working on the effects and just kind of balancing him out. Very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Benny's just not very good. <laughs> I think I was lost. How do I... It's okay. Oh, I Benny. lost all my coins. Oh, I have to do everything we... again? Yeah. Roguelike baby. Um, yeah. If you're in the Sheridan Twitch chat and you are a developer of one of the games we're going to be looking on and you're wondering where you might want to be right now, 
uh, the Sheridan All Years Discord server has like sort of a waiting room for uh, people who are going to be showing up next. So that's where you're going to want to be heading. Um, on Benny's note, um, he was kind of lost. That's something that we've talked about a fair bit, and we do want to have like a mini map system or at least mm -hmm. some sort of a solution to that. It wasn't a priority for us for this build. Right now, we're just aiming to have something for Kickstarter, uh, which we're aiming to release actually on Monday. Um, but it is something that we're going to be working towards. We're at least in discussion of that right now. We're not sure what that's going to look like, like where it might be on the screen or what form that might take, but it is something we're talking about. Right, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm just watching Benny try to train these enemies. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's one of the things we really liked about our gameplay was you couldn't stay in one spot. The enemies force you to, to kind of move around and adapt. Mm -hmm. You get into these kiting behaviors, which are kind of central to our game. It's interesting that the game ended up developing in that way. Um, even with, you know, you have a weapon that sort of causes pushback and you have a system where you can you can only reload in a single spot, and yet you, you still develop a system in which you have to be moving, you know what I mean? In which you yeah. can't just stay in one place and push people back. I think that's like, <laughs> you know, you've really successfully worked around that issue, which I think is great. Thank you. Um, so, I don't know, if there's anything else you guys want to talk about right now, because um, I'm kind of drawing a blank, I'm really enjoying what we're watching, but uh, you guys probably have some more insight. Uh, ben, do you want to bring anything up? Um, other than that, there's, I think, from last build, you didn't have the second area, which is now in the game as well. So there's this, I think, there's this biome, which is sort of like the first floor and everything, and then when you beat Sharon, there's the whole second biome. I won't spoil anything. But, uh, uh, I'm not even hitting that is, I don't think we're going to be seeing that, just given... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I was going to make another joke at Benny's expense, but I think I'll... I think I'll hold off this time. But uh, it doesn't seem likely that we'll be hitting that in the next five minutes, unless Benny starts really clacking on that keyboard. You is know there only I mean? one no fire problem. hydrant in this, in this, in this room? So there's four, and there's one at each corner. No pressure, Benny. The so are the shops random, or are shops after bosses? Shops are randomly generated in the level, and they spawn with a random set of items. So I think there's around 12 items right as of right now. And what do the um, items do? So they increase your speed, attack, and uh, health. I don't think I've ever run into a shop. If I would, I would have bought a lot of the... <laughs> yeah, so that's an item in the middle there, I'm guessing? No, Not that's the coin. Funny. The coin. Oh, that's just a special coin? Okay. Yeah, the items, you'll know when you see an item. Okay. Um, it's, they're usually... So there's four spaces for items. You can either have a helmet, a hose, uh, boots, or misc. And the misks will sort of, like, revolve around you, per se. Nice, a little orbiter. Yeah, and they got some really cool part effect, particle effects, I should say that. Um, it's kind of cool. Benny, you're a Warframe player, you'll like that. Mm -hmm. One thing um, I would say to maybe any other designers that are watching this chat right now, um, we found it really useful for us to have somebody on the project champion uh, like one of the core pillars, or maybe have multiple people championing uh, different pillars for our game. So one of our pillars that we're trying to address right now is uh, understanding. Uh, so information, um, uh, like icons that clearly display things, maps, um, states, buffs, things like that. Um, we need to consider in every aspect of our design and it's something we're still working on. Uh, there is no point in our game where I think that pillar is complete per se. It's something that we always work towards. So I guess what I would say to like aspiring designers that are watching this is that well, you know, yes, you can get to a point in, in game design even after like two years where you have a good product, you can always improve upon that, even if it's just in that one element. And it really doesn't 
need to be a whole team that focuses on that. That can be one person that consistently brings that up every time that you guys meet. Right? That's good advice, yeah. It's um, got the big knowledge. <laughs> big knowledge, the big thing. So, um, what year are you guys in Sheridan? Or have you graduated? Uh, Third year. Year three. Year threes? Wow. Yeah. Yep. Are you planning on taking this into the Capstone project, or are you going to be forced to start an entirely new game for that? Uh, I think they're going to make us try a new game. I don't know. I don't really know how uh, Capstone, Capstone works. Capstone, you have to make a new game from scratch. You can't yeah, start right. until the year begins. But we do intend to take this as far as we can. Uh, we've been doing all of this in our spare time, so this hasn't intersected with any of our classes. Interesting. Um, and yeah. what what was the original catalyst for making this game? Was it a game jam? Uh, it was, we. It was right after. Um, what is it? The uh, sprint winter week. sprint week. Yeah. Mm. We were discussing. I believe at the time we had an arcade week, um, and we were discussing how there were some really wacky takes that you could have on some of those games. So like that game jam kind of catapulted us into thinking that way. It was a good place for us to not necessarily make a game that worked really well, but to think about games that might work even better. Uh, it got us thinking about it, and then a bunch of us from that particular uh, section in that uh, like uh, sprint week kind of got together and said, you know, it'd be pretty cool if we made something that was actually within our own parameters rather than somebody else giving that to us, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And there was and just some kinda... pushback on that, but yeah. Yeah, just kind of leapt off from there. Nice. Yeah. Um, our game has taken like a lot of different forms. Uh, it's evolved over the years. Um, it, it's definitely different than what we proposed, I would say. Like, there's still the core mechanics of like spraying down enemies. There's still the refilling. There's still like running around and all that. But like in our initial draft, we didn't even talk about items. We didn't have bosses planned. We didn't have like all of these extra things that I think really give our game life. Um, those were things that came over time with like serious discussion. Right, and I think that's a that's a good sort of uh, snapshot of how development works. I want to find one of time. these item drops because I haven't gotten one yet, and I feel you like... have one minute to do so. <laughs> oh no, we may need to work on the. Uh, yeah, maybe because I haven't seen a smart. single one. Our one critique is drop rights. That's it. Yeah, but that's totally fair. That's one of our newest systems is items. Well, it's looking fantastic, guys. You've made a lot of good progress. Make sure to give my props and the props of GDS to the rest of the team. You guys have done a Thank fantastic you. job. Um, Discord link is in the Twitch chat for updates on this game, and it is also available through the itch link with an update just last night to fix bugs. And yeah, uh, any closing words from Ethan or Ben? I don't know. Thank you for playing. <laughs> well, thank you for it joining is, us. Is, There's an item, buddy. It's a key. <laughs> I think that's a key. We did it. I don't know we, never got, we never got to see the keys open anything either. So there yeah. are chests in the game that you can open with that. And those lead um, to items. Even cross this. Yeah. yeah. You can jump with spacebar. So the other okay. thing too, um, right. just as like a closing <laughs> remark, uh, yeah. I was talking about having like understanding as one of our core pillars. Um, one form that we want to have that like included with our game would be like having a tutorial. I know that we have the starting room right now where you can kind of see the basic controls, but we found in games similar that do that. Like I know Binding of Isaac has a very similar kind of system where they throw you into a room with like the basic controls on the floor and you need to figure it out from there. Um, we wanted to have a, a scripted tutorial that walks you through the motions so that you can expand on what you've already practiced rather than being handed the controls and told to go. Right? Yeah, that can be very beneficial. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, okay. thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for showing up your game. That was No Water in Hell for anyone who might have joined late. Uh, really thank fun. you, Ethan, and thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Right. See you guys. Yep, have a good one. Right. And next one. I'm dragging in Zoe. 
Bonjour. Hello. Ooh, you were French. Ooh. So this game is Very Lion's fun. Life. Again, available on that itch link in our Twitch description. Uh, Zoe, do you want to give us a brief little introduction to this game while Benny struggles with the stream? I'm trying. For sure. <laughs> um... So this is very much a work in progress. I kind of started it um, in August last summer. So it's been a couple months. Um, very rough, but uh, it's a survival game. Um, you you play as a lion and you uh, go hunt for food and water. And we're hoping to talk about poaching um, during it and um, add, a, add a narrative element as well. Uh, later down the road. I see. So this is a game with a message. Yes. There we are. Control. Walk. I can eat. I can quick attack. I can quick attack. And sprint and jump. All right. uh, Benny, I, I hate to break it to you, but the current game is Lion's Life. It's not the next game. I... You could do this as well. No, we can't. I don't know. <laughs> ah! I have no power here. Okay. These folks. <laughs> I hope you enjoy OBS. Oh, that doesn't even fit. Whatever. Okay. Here we are. We're playing this game. Oh. I wasn't expecting first person. Wow. Eh. I really enjoy the aesthetic I should've, here. I should have looked at the controls again. Thank you. Yeah, I, the art is, um, we have a 2D artist. The 3D art is um, all just uh, from online, as it's found online uh, currently. So you are the lion here? Yes. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so talk about some of the goals of this game, some of the controls. I mean, you uh, talked a little bit about your inspiration with giving a... Some commentary on poaching so how does that come through in the game you know give us like a rundown um so it's very like work in progress right now but in the future we're hoping to well right now we're gonna have a bit of an aesthetic change um so we're gonna lean a little bit more into like fantasy and sci-fi so our poachers are actually going to be like most like aliens like humans coming down to this planet um and invading it and kind of destroying it. So um, they're gonna have yet? like oh my God. freaking uh, plasma blasters and stuff. Freaking laser beams. Yeah. So you're going to uh, a James Cameron Avatar kind of approach. With <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Avatar the video game coming out 2023. Um, that deer so that was... is just holding on. <laughs> ah! I should yeah, have looked at the controls kind of, a little bit more. It was more. kind of um, bugged, so I just kind of commented it out. But it's supposed to die and turn into a, a, a food node where you could eat it. Um, when... Sorry, when you, go ahead. When you kill it. Um, I did place down a couple of food nodes. Well, I have a food node and a water node. They're just like cubes. Um, there we and go. you can eat and drink as well. Oh, I see. So th there's a resource management in the bottom right that you're mm -hmm. working around. I see. Interesting. So the gameplay loop is going to be hunting for these food nodes. And then where do the po the poachers come into play? Um, so that's going to kind of tie into like the narrative, uh, which we're hoping to add. Um, so like the over the overarching goal will be like to to rid them um, from your planet. Nice. So, are you going to be poaching the poachers? I guess so, yeah. I can, change, I can change perspective, right? Or is that not in right now? Sorry, Benny, what did you say? I can change. Can I change perspective? I saw that you could, or is that uh, not working right now? I locked it because it's very, um, right. like, we're yeah. hoping to add it, um, just because, uh, like, the eating and drinking doesn't work as well. It, it just it just needs a little bit more work yeah. for the third person, but we are. I do love how this controls. In. The, the line <laughs> yeah. jumping is really I, good. Thank you. I love games that incorporate really good, fluid and sort of skill based movement, and it looks like Benny's already kind of bee hopping as a line, so I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, yeah, it looks like you could get some really fun gameplay loops just with this prototype, which is super nice. Um, I am slowly starting to starve, though. <laughs> yeah. 
That that see Benny, that's actually a commentary on the dwindling food resources for uh animals in the African Sahara. Totally. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um we don't have any sort of like inventory. We're not planning to have any sort of inventory because we kinda just wanna be like you, you're a lion, you can't pick it up. Yeah. And bring it with you, you have to, when you're hungry, you have to go find something. Oh yeah, people probably can't see it because of the Twitch screen, I just realized, but the food meter on the right is going down, just like the water meter. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I can show that off. Uh, if I move OBS, that is I just cool. realized that uh, Twitch does that thing. I don't know. Uh, one Let of me go through the windows really quick. There we go. Um, there we go. So yeah, what was uh, what was sort of the catalyst for this game, Zoe? What made you want to get started on this? Um, so a friend of mine in the program approached me about it, uh, and she had the initial idea, and I just kind of came up with a few uh, mechanics around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were both really excited to get started. We're a team of three, um, so... I'm doing all like the programming on it, and then we have someone doing level design uh, and narrative, and then we have a 2D and concept artist. Nice. That's um, yeah, very cool. Thank you. I should probably explain a little bit um, about what you're seeing when you uh, hit right click. Um, so that's a pounce mechanic. Um, and you can hold that, charge it up, and then when you release it, it's supposed to send you flying forward. It's a little bit sticky right now. Um, you need some work, but yeah. And then you're supposed to be able to like pounce on your prey and deal damage that way a lot faster than you would with the quick attack. Yeah, one thing that I think would be cool with that is like a little, I don't know, like a circle that shows where you're gonna land that like stretches out as you charge up or something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Help you sort know. of gauge um, yeah. how far it's gonna send you. For sure. And so you just know exactly where you're going to land, so you can like line it up on like the enemy you want to hit or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. For sure. I do like the simplicity of it. I think, that, like, in terms of both, like... I... Yeah. I feel like a lion, and I feel like that achieves the goal. Exactly. Like, in, like, <laughs> the concept of just, like, you know... The concept is that you're a hunter in, like, uh... I don't know. Wilderness, I guess. I'm oh, not I'm phrasing starving. this very well. I can't. <laughs> I, can't you... I can't run anymore. <laughs> I'm I think too, keeping it simple I'm along that and just having this like really tight knit core system is really gonna work for you. I really enjoy what I'm seeing here. So thank you. You also got some concept art that we can yes. also show. Oh. <laughs> uh, We're gonna see some concepts. Don't don't look at my screen. So how long have you guys been working on this? Uh, two months so far. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It can, yeah, it can be hard to kind of keep that progress going when school started, you know? Yeah, I mean, sort we've been as... having weekly meetings, which is really wow. good that we've been able wow. to continue to do that. <laughs> I haven't even had, like, casual weekly meetings with my friends, so. <laughs> Benny, you're not showing that. Uh, yes, there what are you talking about? Uh, it's stream lag, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh Oh, this is very reminiscent of Firewalk. I wish I could do this better than just doing this. I'm clicking images. Then. Oh, I love these line options. These are great. <laughs> are you going to get the line options from loot boxes? Um, no. Um, so... <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> they're no, they're, we have no plans for loot boxes. Um... That's a shame. <laughs> um... The uh, the different lions are um, sort of so we're thinking of having like different uh, kind of tribes, so they're all going to look a little bit different in those tribes, and they're all going to kind of have their own stories and like a special landmark um, that'll be like a sort of a major uh, questing area. I w I'd love the idea of like scaling a tree. I feel like you could have some really nice um, jumping challenge. Could, could be yeah. fun with the pouncing. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Did you ever play uh, about that. You know, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess? I have not. I do need there, to go back and play some of the older Zelda games. There's some fun kind of zippy, they're not like challenges, uh, but there's some fun like little jumping sections as like Wolf Link that you do. 
that like really utilize a nice pounce mechanic kind of fun um it it sort of isn't like a puzzle or a challenge but it is fun to watch and play i should definitely check that out oh god is this but all yeah. in floating island that's gonna be dope yeah. as hell. <laughs> <laughs> we we have some ideas for like floating islands, sort of like a watering hole, but it's it's like elevated. Um, we have our great tree, which is going to be one of our our landmarks. Um, sort of just like a world. Um, you can kind of see, yeah, the, right there. Um, we also have sort of an idea for what we might want the the poacher's base to look like. Which is the the one with the chains, sort of coming from it. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. I also love how like I can see the concept arts like direct art style influence on the game that we played, even though one is two D and one is three D. Like I can <laughs> very much see like that concept art showing up almost exactly as it is in the game and looking really good. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. All right, any last yeah. uh, little comments on this game? Um, so we're a very small team, um, and we definitely need some help. Uh, so it, on the itch page, uh, if you know someone watching is uh, wants to work on programming or three D art for um, their portfolio and want to to join this project there are a couple of forms in there um also if you want to uh play test the game there is also play testing forms in the description as well on the each page so uh please check those out all right thank you zoe again this was yeah. lion's life this was available on the itch page down below uh small team of three they've got a prototype out now be sure to check it out sometime uh thanks again for coming zoe thanks for having me any final final words uh that's everything for me <laughs> all right fantastic uh, now we have thanks for coming project scalable whose team couldn't make it but i was sent a youtube link to to share um i will oh you can see my uh hi zoe Bye. yeah so next up so this is a is this like a youtube promotional trailer that we get to watch uh, yes apparently all right. Project Scalable is a 3D physics-based puzzle game, and I, I lost the game. I really dig the music on this. It's nice.
was the trailer for fucking Scalable. That was pretty um, neat. I really liked the uh, the aesthetics on that. I thought that was a really cool looking game. Not to mention yeah. the music was really fun. Um, one sec, I'm gonna go to that page really quickly. Although I do really wish that all these games would automatically full screen, uh, <laughs> because I'm having to to awkwardly switch my display capture every single time I. I load up any of these games that I can't see Twitch chat anymore. Alright, so while Benny plays, Project Scalable is a 3D physics-based puzzle game where players can grow and shrink cubes and spheres to solve puzzles. Each of the game's puzzles have multiple solutions, so experiment to see what works best for you. This is created by Nick Short, Evan McQueen, Ethan Davis, and Justin Vreeling, with music by Cheshire. Um, this is available on the itch.io page if people want to know, you know more about how this game looks and feels to play because we don't have any developer insight unfortunately um it looks like it i was gonna make a vr joke but so i do have some insights on uh this game because i i know the people who work on it and this was developed in unreal uh, rather than unity which is what we're most often used to i do not know how to get out of this room uh, and it was worked on for a few uh i think last year last summer ish uh, and yeah, they've been working on it, and now it's been... The dinosaur? Released. There is a dinosaur in the background. I do not know how to get out of it. Uh, maybe put on the VR goggles? I don't have any VR goggles, I'm sorry. No, I mean... But, like, th those are VR boots. Ah, I can move this thing. Ah. I don't know, I really kind of like this aesthetic to the game. Where like everything kind of looks like plasticky, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I I really like how it looks. I don't know. That's that might be just me, but like I'm a huge fan of that kind of style. Whoa. Yep. I like that a lot. You can just blow shit up by just exploding by expanding them. Yeah, I do like that, it, like, to me it looks like someone took the idea of, you know how when you play Portal and you, like, totally cheese through a level by, like, stacking crates in a way that you shouldn't be able to? I like that someone took that idea and was like, we're making a whole game out of that. Yeah. I like that. It's a nice idea. But I'm just terrible at first person jumping. <laughs> No, come back. Oh, that's fine. I have it. No. No. Alright. I think it's fine. <laughs> Can you rescale the cube while you stand on top of it? Yes. But it, I oh, don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. This is like a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, dude, this is so goofy and fun. I love this. No, my, my piece of... So this is an Unreal project. Yeah, I know a couple Unreal. people will be very happy to hear that. We've got a couple Unreal diehards. Um, I believe my project was actually made in Unreal as well. How do you not know? But, um, it was a while ago. I don't have a very good memory. <laughs> good job. It sounds accurate, but you know, I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, Matt says Unreal Engine Four. And then he also says Resident Sleeper. Ah, I saw this. this is nice. I like this I icon. I also like... Oh, that's Sorry, go ahead. I like how it like clearly opens up into like a city later, but like this is a really nice sort of like tutorial design. Where it's just like puzzle after puzzle kind of thing. No. In a very straight... Oh! Hang on, I can do this. Just keep stacking. Maybe make this smaller. Like, <laughs> what the? Physics is hilarious. I love when things. Just oh god, everywhere. this is the best. Just oh, oh no! Yes, this is exactly what we needed. Just make that big. Just watching a game where the physics engine just gets to have like a like an absolute seizure. This is perfect. I like literally have no complaints. To... Oh no, I can't get any bigger. That's what she said. I'm just kidding. No jokes like that. No, I didn't. Alright, let's I see if I can. It. Can I get out now? If I increase this. 
Oh, no. Oh, no where am I? Oh. Don't worry, I'm like stronger than a box. I'm stronger than a box. All right. Your daily just, inspirational quote from Benny. Explode everything. Everyone in Twitch chat, remember when you look in the mirror this morning that you are stronger than a box. Oh, there we go. Oh. Pass the level. Where am I going? So is that the end of level thing? Yeah, I think so. Oh, what's that? I just saw what's something. What's in the can? What is in the canister? I just saw something, but I think I need to reset this level or something because I think it just fell through the floor. <laughs> How do I get out? I think I do have to pick up that thing, but I can't because it's a... Uh... Does oh, wait, escape no. do anything? Nope, no. there we go. Ooh. I, okay, I can pick these up. The bridges. Yeah, let's make a couple of bridges. Oh, it's too heavy now. I want this. <laughs> Ah oh, no! Come back! <laughs> Come on! It's colliding with the platform I'm standing on, so I can't pick it up properly. Come on! Come on! Okay. All right, it's up here. No! Alright, maybe, maybe, maybe I can start over again. Okay, move that out of the way, and then we'll first do this and make the bridge. Nope, that's too small. Okay, first bridge. Very cool. Then... This isn't. This part of no! the showcase is not like a showcase. This is a watch Benny suffer case, is, and I think that is. perhaps is the best part. I am not sure how to address the this. This is so entertaining. <laughs> I want to. I want to make. I want to make it clear to the people watching that this is not the fault of game developers. This is all Benny. How dare you! <laughs> It's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. Alright. I got it up. Alright, you've made a little seesaw. Things up with me, but... Oh no, the slope of that is too too much. Dude, like, I, there are so many jokes I could make. I will say, though, that it's raising. very difficult to move the things because it, it, does yeah. it does deny you because if it's colliding with something, it stops uh, being able to be touched. So I can't really... Like, I... I can't pick this up! Did you try getting better? I have. That's fair. You see me using my head to literally push blocks. Big brain. I do like that camera. Can you make that platform longer? No, uh, these... I can't make these smaller or bigger. Interesting. Ah! Let me pick this up! This is just in a purgatory of I can't pick up. I think I might have clipped into the wall. And just... I, I think you broke it, honestly. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go to level two. I want to see what the canister is. Go do a oh. different level. Where we're actually is that fish? let's let's actually use the mechanics of the game, which is the scale. What is that on the wall? Take a moment. I wanna see what's on the it wall. Looks like a chicken. It it looks like a chicken. Oh. I would say go up there and then put grab the crate and put it on the box. Oh yeah, I did not see that orange button. Very hard to pick things up. Yeah. It, there we go. All right. Okay. Benny, wait. Look, there's you in the corner. What are you talking about? Look, look in the corner. They put you. I'm just gonna ignore that. It's. I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Benny.
You're getting it. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Where'd it go? So unfortunate. Oh my god. Okay, maybe I just make it smaller so it doesn't collide with things as much. I feel like that might be a Oh, I know, I can't, yeah. click, I can't click it anymore. Make it pocket sized whenever you have to move it. Oh. Okay. Well, just decrease the size. Oh, oh, wait, no, I can pick it up from there. Nice, okay, good. I was about to lose my mind. <laughs> That open. Uh, I think there's a, oh, right, yeah, right, there's right. door. Right <laughs> and you're like, what does that do? Like, actually, that door was open the whole time. You did that for nothing. Canister. What did it do? I don't know. I just picked it up. See oh, if you can double nice. jump now. I can't. Double nope. Jump. Oh, I don't want to go. I'm sure there's a, there's another crate in there. I'm sure there's another crate. I don't think it's a crate. Or maybe just stand on it. Nope, it needs okay. to be a crate. Okay, I gotta go back and get the crate, but I can't get a crate because I need a crate to get up the crate. Um, I can use this one, maybe. I'm stuck. <laughs> I think I'm stuck. I think I got soft locked. <laughs> you did not! <laughs> I, I promise you there's like another crate in that next area. Is there? I there's got one. there's gotta be. It's gotta be like amongst all the okay, like the, I'll, the I'll, trash. I'll look again. I'll look again. What if it reset that puzzle too? I would have left. There's some beer. There's some liquor. Um Can you pick up the glowing crate? Nope. I cannot pick up huh. any of these things. There's got to be a box around here somewhere. I bet I have to use the card that I, I had earlier. But I can't jump- oh wait no. Maybe. Maybe? Hmm. Alright, we are approaching our little break, I believe. Yeah. We've got a break for the next um, 15 minutes. Yep. Twitch I'm gonna get some water. Yeah, everyone hydrate. Um, it's around lunchtime in Canada, so grab some food, grab a snack, <laughs> and then next up we've got oh uh, we've got the the main event. Oh uh, we've got a, we've got a big one. We've got it's a really good game. It's without flaw. Right. <laughs> it's the game I worked on. There's no bias at work here. Yeah, I'm actually really, uh... There's some really, really uh, like there's some really, uh, anything to do with when you're directly adjusting the transforms and, like, the scale of an object is always really, uh... Rough. Really rough, and I... Yeah. I really liked what we saw from Project yeah, Scalable, though, it's, and I think... a lot of really nice things. Yeah, that... it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take polish like anything does, but man, mm -hmm. like, what a promising Although it concept. it might be a while till, till those games get, uh get that specific game gets finished because i know that team is in fourth year now uh, no so that means that and this is not their capstone game i know this because one of the people on that capstone on, on that team is on my capstone team and we are not <laughs> and we're not doing and i think it was more of a, a project than anything else uh, to work on fourth year is the great disruptor it really is it really is all right we've got a 15 minute break folks thanks for tuning in with us we will be back at 2 30 with the next game, Power Lines. Yep, and uh, let me. I'm gonna actually change the, uh, the the look of this. Changing the thing. Great. Look at that. Me changing the stuff. And what will we do until then? Uh, get water. Get food. I don't know. I'm gonna take a power nap. Do you even have the time? Fifteen minute power nap. Am I gonna stay here and like have bands yeah, with me? Can't believe that was this. a lie. No, I'm gonna stay here. I, I can't fall asleep that quickly. That'd be amazing. You know, I read a um, I read something that said that the average person falls asleep within 15 to 30 minutes. Can I just say, if that's you, I I hate you. Like, I 
Hmm? What? I missed that. I don't know how oh. I missed that, but I missed that. <laughs> Did you space? I spaced out for like two uh, seconds. The average person apparently falls asleep in something like 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, must be like one guy who's just instantly yeah, there all must the be, people with like, like narcolepsy. <laughs> insomnia to or like narcoleptic Tom or some shit who's just like out like that bringing the average down. Because I can tell you I do not fall asleep that quickly. It takes me like a while to fall. Like you have to get in the I don't because you don't ever remember how you fall asleep yourself. Um, often. You just sort of just do it. <laughs> you sort of just do it? Um, and but then you don't remember when you fell asleep. Like, uh, yep, I remember the last time I looked at the clock was at this time. Yeah. Don't know when I, actually, I fell so asleep. I've got a question from one of my team members, Benny. We've got a guy who worked on it who wasn't in Sheridan. Do we want to bring him into this Discord and then kick him after? Or do we just want to have uh, him sit on the sidelines? It's possible. We're, all, we're still on stream, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah can do if they want to be on stream. Then. Yeah, if he wants to be, and I'll send him an invite, and then I'll just kick if him he does. After. If he doesn't, then then less hassle, you know. Yeah, that's true. Um, Next game, do I have any data? Ah, uh, yes, your game was also made in Unreal. <sighs> Cool. And for now. How was your summer, Benny? We haven't talked about it. <laughs> I mean, I had co-op, but it wasn't really co-op because of pandemic. I think about fifty percent of my year had like co-op at Sheridan. Oh, lovely. It's not yeah, not super great because it's a whole it's a whole thing, um, which I don't blame the school for, uh, for being not great. I do blame the school for not being great, but I don't blame the co-op like facilities for being right, for being yeah. bad because it's not their fault that there's no jobs anywhere. And and I did that for most of the summer and then like and then I made my capstone team, which is very cool, and we'll be making stuff and hopefully we can showcase that at the summer showcase. And then I started just sat around and like I caught up in Warframe. I caught up I played Warframe a bunch, like a lot. Your Warframe account is stacked. It's it's terrifying. Uh <laughs> don't don't worry about my warframe account it's not like i'm not I... worried about it i'm impressed by it <laughs> there's like not there's probably not a single person in this program who doesn't have like a thousand plus hours on at least one game like I mean, you're preaching to the choir more. here let's see let's see my although the two warframe things that you do have bookmarked on google chrome are showing up front and center on the live stream right now it does one of them is yeah. for relics and one of them is for home. don't worry <laughs> about those and everything else. i have like i have runescape excel sheets runescape <laughs> so yeah <laughs> excel sheets. i'm like the only person alive who uses them <laughs> uh yeah in terms of warframe i have every single item Except for founder stuff and then the new Ninus Prime stuff, uh, those are still things that I because I because school started when Ninus came out, so I stopped. I played uh, I played Warframe in 2016, I believe, for a solid four months. I got Mag Prime. I was super stoked to get my first Prime. I like grinded my ass off for it, you know, because I was like very new and that was like end game stuff for me. Mm -hmm. And then I quit, and never, I never once touched that Prime Warframe. Like I, I, I don't know why, is, but I quit. Mag is, Mag is very good. She base Mag my first Prime. Prime. Mag, Mag Prime is very good. I, I like, I love using Mag. Um, I have I most, I have almost all of the mods. Uh, I think there's like a couple of like, there's a couple of like peculiar mods that I don't have because I don't want to farm specific missions because <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, I could probably buy it with Plat. Um, I used to play a lot of Valkyr. Valkyr, uh, Valkyr is very good. She's... And now there's like a prime for that yeah. Warframe, which I always thought was interesting because like it's that's the one Warframe that I knew the lore of, and so it makes no sense that they have a prime. Also true. Um, I will say though that uh, we've gotten to the point where there's a lot of primes. Um, yeah, Rhino tank build. I do remember when I played in 2016, Rhino was like like the one warframe that like you would play because like back in 2016 it was so broken that it was like impossible to beat kind of thing mm -hmm. he's still, he's still I, I, very broken. yeah he's still he's still definitely still broken. good i hear uh very but, like, back, in, very back interestingly in the day, if the last time you played 2016 
Uh, Nidus was released in 2016 on December 22nd. And what was his name? Nidus. It's the infested Warframe, and it he now yeah, has. I a, remember that. He now has a prime, so it's been interesting that long yeah. that a, a really old, really old Warframe. Uh, what I would consider as new Warframes in like when I started playing, have getting yeah. primes now. It's a very surreal experience as a as a long time Warframe player. What do you think about the waifu Warframe that just released? She's fine. I don't fine. really aesthetic. Sure, aesthetic is fine. Um, she's kind of useless though. Yeah, that's what she's, that's what I've heard. She's kind of useless though. Like like she's but in terms of high level play. Um, but like in low level in like low standard missions, she she'll do fine. Like every single Warframe, Warframe is good, and I Warframe is one of those games I want to get into because mm -hmm. I love that sort of like upwards grind. But then whenever I like start it, it's either like so intimidating or like it sort of loses its, its luster really mm -hmm. quickly. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that might be just for me. I know a lot of people like get really invested into it and enjoy it, but I always well, find myself sort of burning out at a certain. Yeah, we'll point. play. We'll play with you. I play. Yeah. I I've done enough in the game where I don't have anything to do anymore. So I don't that mind be, helping people play. <laughs> that might be my next game that I just get in, get sink into. Mm. Uh, we have like about eight minutes yeah, left. What yeah, was our schedule? We got a while. Yeah, it, it is, is free. It is that's free, right. And it's a very nice. And of all the all kinds of free free to play games, it has the best. Bottom line has the best monetary. Um, yeah, I was never a fan of how you could just like like outright buy weapons and stuff like that but like but it doesn't the system of yeah the system of getting them for free and like earning them and like trading and stuff is very in-depth so mm -hmm. that's nice as a free-to-play player you can make enough platinum uh yeah. to do whatever you want it, it takes a little bit of time but that's the part that's the part that's free to play and then yeah find the frame sell them for currency exactly the issue for me was when I played in 2016, I was on the Xbox. I didn't have a PC back then. Xbox and is so, like, sad. Don't well, yeah, play on like, console. Of course. Now <laughs> Don't I play know on that. console. There was like no way for me to like communicate with people or like trade and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was very limited, you know? Yeah, for sure. And also how the currency, how Platinum works in, mm -hmm. on PC compared to console is real whack because console don't, they don't get platinum discounts they just get like a, wow. a discount on an item uh and but on pc you get a direct uh discount on the platinum that you purchase which is... i do love the fashion frame i think the like fashion, fashion frame, frame is one of like the coolest parts of that game let me just yeah. uh can i do i have time i got like five minutes i can show yeah, off my minutes. favorite my favorite it's, um, uh, fashion frame. I, I, uh... I like that sort of like the grind naturally continues to just make your character have so many like wacky particle effects and stuff. Um, I do enjoy that. This is definitely not a Warframe stream. <laughs> <laughs> we got time to kill. They don't have to. They don't have to watch. This isn't school sponsored. This is our time. <laughs> Man, I I want uh, if I could. Get into get into D. That could be a possibility. Who knows? It's that time again. Here you go. Here's my work. Inbox time. messages await the operator. Oh, you're gonna give me the login information? No, I already logged in. And the six digits on the back? Yeah, see that's the stuff that I like. Is that all your warframes just all look so cool? But then the kind of stuff that I don't like is like you know, dailies and stuff like that, and like, you know, just like an excess of UIs to check through every day just to get to like I don't know whatever uh, highlighted mission. I will is, say I will say you uh, get to a point in the game where you just sort of play the game, especially in the new yeah. new, new player. Uh, showcase isn't over. Um, we're we're vibing we're for on, five minutes. We're on. We're technically on break until two thirty, and Chris will yell at me because he's presenting on our line. But I'm just showing off Mike. because we were talking about Warframe, and now I'm just talking about Warframe. Yeah, we're just kind of like shooting the shit. Um, uh, I also have... If you don't like Warframe, come back in five minutes. Come back in five minutes. Uh, my, <laughs> I really like how my Saren looks. My Saren yeah. looks really nice. Let's... She's great. Um, I also have... Sending the server to join? There's no way you're not in the server, Matt. It's... My... I also really like my... Um, my Titania is also really nice. What the... My Titania is really nice. 
I think uh, I don't use Atlas a lot, but I have this really nice Atlas. My Discord is bugging. Uh, you do. Benny, not... could you send me? Could you send me an invite link to the general uh, Discord? Uh... Because mine's not working for some reason. I can do. Yeah. And apparently Matt's not in the all years Discord. What? what? I don't know how that's possible. What? Uh... Game design channel. I can send a link to you directly. DM it to you. But yeah, this is my Warframe account. I have everything uh, that you could possibly ask for on under my equipment have you spent a lot of money on warframe or do you I spent, largely do things uh, so freely i've bought three prime accesses uh, i bought i bought two prime vaults and i bought two prime accesses mm -hmm. uh, one of them was for octavia because i am a big music fan and i love octavia and she's great i played her a lot when she first released and, and then i got her prime Got Limbo Prime, uh, and then I got Rhino Prime uh, when I first started playing, uh, and I bought his Prime Vault, and then I bought, and then during a time where I wasn't playing at mu as much, but I was, I really, I, I needed to get Loki and Ember Prime. I bought Ember and Loki Prime uh, Prime Vault, so I have those as well. And yeah, that's most of the money I spent. And then I there's a couple of like bits of platinum here, and I buy uh, Tenocon tickets. Uh, nice. Up. One of the things I like to do, and I don't know if this is just me, I know there are certain game modes, like Iron Man game modes that do this, but like, I like to get stuff like on my own. Like, I don't even like to like trade for stuff. I tend to like to go for like the drops myself and stuff, mm -hmm. just because that's how I get enjoyment out of the game. That's very fair. Uh, I think one of the big parts about, about Warframe that I find that really helps when you play with other people and you do get help is that a lot of it is pretty difficult not difficult to do but just like difficult kind, to build for tip, difficult to build for and like having the guidance and this is also a little bit a problem with uh, of warframes like overall nature is that you need someone to tell you what to do because the game doesn't tell you what to do and i think that's like, yeah that's, that's a lot of mmo style games though so that's fair yeah, you should it's... see runescape's ui these days it's I absolutely horrific it. anyways that's that's my warframe <laughs> account and I have... all right we are loading up the next game. We're now actually doing. I gotta actually leave for her. Yes, I'm actually doing it. Now we're doing power lines. Uh, I. Hello. Please welcome yeah. Matthew Popowicz and Sam. Hello. Hey yo. What's good? Not much. All right, we are. Benny's just gonna get his little Discord stream ready, and then we will be starting in about a minute. No more Warframe talk, it's banned. Sad day. Alright, here we are. Uh, Chris. Get What's up? Bailey out of here. Oh, is Bailey in? Did Bailey join too? Yeah, for sure. Oh, here, except for Zarin and Sean. Alright. Bailey, you are muted. I don't know if you knew that. No, you're not. Okay. you cheating them boxes there. You guys want to talk about this game? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so this is our game for the Game Makers Toolkit Game Jam. Um, I'm pretty sure it was 48 hours to complete a game with a theme. Um, pretty sure the theme was connection, connect, connect yeah, together. Was, yeah, it was something like connect together. Tied together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think the the biggest thing about this game is that it was made in 48 hours. It's like the craziest game jam I've ever been a part of. There was not a lot of sleep those days. Yeah, there was not a lot of sleep. And um, yeah, uh, the process, I think we spent like half of the first day just um, with process work. And just design, you know, what what kind of game we wanted to make, and we had many ideas. Yeah. Like, there was there was a lot of like uh, 
I guess, like, committee meetings where we were trying to decide on, like, how we would approach this theme. We went through, like, a ton of iterations, and I think it was yeah. actually Sean who came up with this idea. Yeah. So it's sort of a shame he's not here. Um, yeah, Sean was busy. Uh, he, he has a group meeting he's a part of which i'm also a part of but you know mm -hmm. i decided to but you're him. yeah you're flaky so it's okay <laughs> sorry just but um, no, he, he did pitch the idea and he also did the uh character design uh for this and most of the art i believe yeah was he also right. the crates in the walls What's that? was sean also the crates in the walls I, I think he made those textures and everything for us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, all their art textures, the character. Uh oh. Yeah, it's so like we only had oh. two days. So there are some physics quirks that like we sort of can't get around at the end of the day, but it functions mostly well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's not gonna connect. There we go. <laughs> like, is that gonna connect? Yeah, so one of our main, like, design, I guess, pillars was, like, the idea that the player themselves is, like, a part of the chain of connection. Um, and so that involves having a crate tied to yourself that you have to, like, move around and, and place properly. Whoa. Uh, and that allowed us to do some really fun things with some of the puzzles. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It was a issue with the camera, like, cause, like, the actual player character is like a, a 3D thing moving around in a 3D world, but um, it's not rendered, and like, Matt um, do some magic when he's like, I don't, I don't know what it's called, Matt, how, how did you, like, put this 2D character in a 3D world? It was, it was just the same way you would set up like a 2D character, and all I did was just rotate him by like, whatever the angle the, ca uh, the camera was. And it was very interesting to do, because I've never done something like that before, especially like in Unreal. So it's a lot of fun that way. One of the fun things about seeing this again after, it's been a couple months since we put this together, I was the guy, I did a lot of the puzzle designs for this, and like the, the map layouts and level designs, and I don't remember how to solve this puzzle. <laughs> so, have fun, Benny. <laughs> oh, I think God. I know, but I just need, I need some lines. You need yeah. some I think, power lines? I think with this one, oh my God. I think with this one, you need to connect something to, Unlock that door. I need, first yeah, I need to get this. I need that. to get this. Oh my god. I'm trying to. I can do that. There we go. Now I can do this. <laughs> Just get a little, like, close up of our guy. Yep. Yeah, Chris. Chris, do yeah, of, the, of the puzzle design and layout of, like, I think six level? I don't remember how many we ended up with. There were a couple levels we ended up having to scrap just because, right. I mean, it was like two days. Um, yep. So yeah, yeah I mean... Made all the levels, like, the last... Yeah, it, <laughs> right up to the end of it was when we were like literally... Like most, so most of our time was designing the like the various elements of the puzzles or whatever. And, you know, blah yada yada And then it like comes down to crunch time in like the last 48 hours when or like the last 24 hours when we realized we have to put it in the engine so that was fun all right can i aha i don't know if that's you got it good. he's cheating he's cheating oh, guys no. <laughs> shut down the stream he's cheating okay you're not allowed to shut down the stream only i can shut down the stream hey this is this isn't fair but yeah, in terms of like puzzle and level design, I think Chris did a really good job with it. Like the mechanic is simple. I I don't think we change up or switch up the mechanic like at all. We just put a spin on it. Like room within a room. Like unlock two room first before like before combining the color. Like you're seeing here. Really nice. There he goes. Oh no, I'm stuck. We spent, we, spent, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how we want to do the uh, moving of the cubes. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. So it was like, before it was like, we originally had to push, you could push them around, and there was like, issues where they would suddenly like, rotate. I don't know, I think this is pretty active. Come on. Wait, 
Wait, now it's red. Oh no, I think I... How do I do this properly? I don't want to give it away, but... I'm stuck. It's not, it's not a fun watch right you struggle. I'm constantly stuck. <laughs> You've got it backwards. You gotta put the you gotta put the squares on the little square platforms on the left, not on the circle. Oh, you're right. Oh my god, can I even reach that far? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, does anyone? I, I've done a lot of talking. Does anyone else, like Matt or Bailey, want to talk more about this? Yeah, music. I mean, you were there. <laughs> um, yeah, I was there, kinda. Uh, no, uh, this was the weekend, so I was actually there. Um, I mean, I guess, I don't know, did we talk about the roles that everyone had on the team? Like, uh, I don't think we really talked about it yet. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, from what I understand, uh, we had another good guy, uh, shouting out my boy Zarin, uh, helping us on this, uh, and Matt and Sam were essentially like those three were just figuring out the logic of the coding pretty much the entire weekend. Meanwhile, Chris just went into his little cave to yeah, pump out all of these. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually do anything on this game. I'm just here in name. Wow. Yeah, he, he kind of just disappeared and then came out and just like, hey, I came up with all these really dumb ideas for puzzles. Hey, just put them in. You, you, you've got a new light source now. I think you just have purple now, so you're set. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. I, once I turn it on, I don't have to, like, yeah. keep them there. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So if we, you know, if we had more time, we would have made puzzles that require you to, like, you know, hold things down and stuff. But, like, I don't really th there were <laughs> huge limitations with having only two days. So we made, yeah. we kept things really simple. I kind of oh, wish yeah. he got to the he had time to get to the last puzzle because I think he would have been pulling his hair out. But uh... I mean, I got st I'm getting stuck on like things that uh, you broke it. I think I just broke it. <laughs> you oh, did. What? You just cl you clipped the box clipped out, the of the box out of the map. Oh shit! Oh, now it's, now the whole thing is done. And What's the reset box. button? <laughs> R or yeah, that, R, there. Uh, R. Press, press tab. Thing. I don't know, it's one of the keys. There we go. There we go. Yeah. No, you you can press a button to teleport there your character is. to your box, I believe. There we go. Oh yeah, there was, didn't there? I think it's yeah. like E or R or something. Press every button on your keyboard. There we oh, go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. So yeah, um, and we got. Who was it that we got contacted by for this map? They like reached out to me on Twitter. I can check. But we had a we had a couple people reach out to us about wanting to like showcase this at the game development world championship or something um they asked if we wanted to join the competition for that and we said no because it was during school um, yeah i think it was more centered around people that like did like year-long development work. yeah and also like it, it's not a fan it's not like a finished project <laughs> Two day wait. Yeah, that's true. This is definitely a prototype. I've always, gonna, I've always gonna want to go back to this and just tweak some stuff. Make it feel more. Feel a lot better. Eat run strat. Clip the buff so and teleport to it. Yeah, Sheesh. if you that's if you that's easy way to not have fun. <laughs> if you hold crouch and then throw your box into the wall multiple times, Benny, you can actually no clip through the door and end the level. I think my only like want for change is that to uh, to have you be able to pick up the, your own box so you don't have to do this weird like slow escort of the box. Because this is why I'm taking so long. Because I have to do yeah. this. I have to do this, and then I have to come back and then take grab it again. It's one of those things that we weren't super satisfied with come the end of the jam but you know another one of those limit i mean this is a game made by limitations just by time mostly so we sort of lived with it you know what i mean and now you do too so like <laughs> oh my god passing on to suffering yeah is that the theme of the game <laughs> yeah on the BLK prototype. Off the box <laughs> <laughs> i think at one point we have like a ring 
the signify like how far a player can. Oh yeah, like, we did have that. We have like yeah. a big ass ring. It was funny. And it, it just got like, it made the level so confusing because there was just so much going on all the time. There was this giant blue, big ring that keeps moving with the right. player. We've got five minutes left. Anyone else from the team want to say anything about this game or maybe future projects? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll just say, uh, this project was definitely a uh, time for me to do something new. Um, I've never, like, really done too much um, sound design or audio design for a game, and uh, I I found all of the uh, Great. sound effects <laughs> I found all, all right, of the uh, done, sound effects point. assets <laughs> for the uh, for the game and made the, the track for it. Uh, it's very simple, but I mean I'm proud of it for what it became. And yeah, just yeah, game, game gems are just really fun. And if you haven't done one before, you should always you should all try it. I wonder if I can put this because I've already broken the level. All right, and um, some of the members of this team are also working on a longer form project in Unreal. Uh, it's an untitled... Oh look, I can walk freely now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so there's a, there's an untitled project currently wor currently being worked on by Sam and Matt and Zarin, who is not here because he's not a student at Sheridan, so he's been banished to the other realm. Um, <laughs> and Matt, I don't know if you want to link the devlogs to that because they've got a YouTube channel going on right now that uh, has regular updates on that project. It's been going along really nice. Uh, Sam also has a uh, Blocktober uh, thing going on his Twitter right now. That's pretty popping. Uh, it's popping. Oh, yeah. I see the oh, lines. Yeah, you can just put it in. Put it in Twitch chat. <laughs> I see um, the lines going down into the into the into the ether. Into the void. Yeah. So, yeah, these pro uh, the people work who worked on this project have just got a lot of things. Uh, I don't know in the works right now, and I would encourage you to. <laughs> Go check it out, only because it's really fun to put more and more pressure on them. Oh, okay. uh, And make them increasingly uncomfortable. Holding accountable. Oh, he loaded up level 7. This is my favorite. Um, I'm really, really new at level design. Like, I've never done any of it, like, professionally before. And so this was really me playing around with, like, a level that had different, like, altitudes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoyed making it, but like some people really hated playing it because it's 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 a not easy puzzle made even more difficult by the fact that sometimes your box just falls out of the map, making it impossible. So you have to start over, which I personally love. Yeah, that is that. Yeah, that was like a bug, and then it ended up looking like amazing, so we just kept it. <laughs> There's no bug, only features. Yeah, and then I, I believe that was your doing, Matt, of making the mo uh, the character light up through Sean's textures. Yeah, because he already had it set up, so I was like, just yeah. the That's one of my favorite little details of this. Uh, little project. Honestly, like, I would want to take this character and just put him in something else in the future, because he's so funky. Alright, that's all the time we have. We don't get- you don't get any favoritism just because you were my team. Yep. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> uh... Thanks for um, Alright, we're gonna boot you guys out. Next up, we have Mushroom Later. Season. Get the heck out of here, kids. I'm free. All right. I this change. is by Ash, correct? Yes. I gotta. I gotta change the. I gotta change the. Thing. In you go. All right. We are loading up mushroom season now. Welcome Ash to the floor. Hello. Um, Bonjour. I think the game is not very long, so you might actually get to finish it in the 15 minutes we have. Nice. But also, I have a lot of things like behind the scenes and stuff that I want to show and talk about. So, uh, can I get like five minutes at the end, uh, just for a screen share and stuff? Yeah, oh, that didn't work. Hold on. Okay, cool. Enter it. Back in space. Oh, it's me. Alright, ah. so if you want to talk a bit about this, Ash. 
Yeah, so you're just like this little guy who's a hermit and lives in a little house in the woods. And he really likes mushrooms and collects them. And yeah, that's the game. You collect mushrooms, you write little notes in your journal about them and what they do. And you kind of just, you know, like... That's you're just it. a guy, and you've just got a little thing to do, and that's... It's pulsome, it's pure, it's focused, I it's really beautiful. I really love the, um, the really explicit, <laughs> I drew it on a piece of paper style. Like, yeah, the crayon lines are great. Yeah, about that. So, this was a game commissioned by uh, Andrew from Indie Apocalypse. And uh, if you don't know, Indie Apocalypse is like this... Uh, zine that comes out like every month and it's been going for two years now uh and the premise is the guy just picks some really cool indie games and oh no uh yeah so he just picks some cool indie games and then uh pays them and publishes a zine and a collection of games for sale that is and neat. this was a uh, first special edition where he collabed with the Kush Comics, which is a Latvian comic company. And what they do is they publish a kind of unusual and interesting comics by different indie people. And so what they did was they got five developers and five comic artists and illustrators and just like paired us up randomly and said, cool, now make a game, like, you know, uh, aim at around uh, a weekend's worth of work. Also, when you see sparkles on the ground, that means there are uh, mushrooms there, so you should probably look around that place. Interesting. So, you, you got to work with, like, entirely new team members on this project? Uh, yeah, it was me, and I got paired up with a lot of Ilma, who is a, uh, illustrator from Riga, and this is her style. Like, she draws on paper, and with, like, my, uh, with ink and pencils, and then colors it in with uh, watercolors, sometimes That's like kind really of loosely, nice, which is kind of the style I tried to emulate in here. That's really nice. I enjoy that. Yeah. So uh, how closely did you work with this person on this project? Did they have like direct input on the game or was it mostly you kind of going off of their style on your own? Uh, no, we like worked together from scratch. So, nice. Actually, this game, it, like, like we uh, brainstormed a lot in the beginning. Uh, she drew like some ideas, and then like the idea of this hermit collecting mushrooms just felt very natural to make into the game. And it's actually based on a uh, mini kush, mini kush uh, publication from like 2017, I think, which is an entire comic about this guy like this exact guy in these exact woods who just kind of writes you a letter and talks about how he likes mushrooms and vibing in the forest so you said this was a part of a, a, a zine yeah do you have like a link to that or like where this was published or or like anything that like maybe some people who are interested in checking this out or the publication you know uh, you could put that in Twitch yes. chat just so they can like explore yeah so here's the link it's uh the other developers there were, uh, no. I think it was uh, the Catamites, uh, Alien Melon, or uh, Nathalie Lawhead, and also Cold Histy. And they all made like their separate games with entirely different art styles because this is kind of like the indie comic scene. Well, you know, kind of like indie games, everyone does their own unique thing to stand out. So there were a lot of really unique art styles and approaches to games. So were there and... any like significant challenges that you like encountered or like like a big problem to overcome when you were working on this game? Ah, uh, so the thing is, uh, it kind of uh, made this thing with me and another friend of mine, uh, and kind of you know shared all the uh, work but the problem is as you can see like all of the trees are moving and there are no loading zones so this is one big map and i'm good at making games fun and pretty but i'm not good at making them computer friendly so this thing ran in like complete dog shit on most computers and like took way too much space because the uh, artist 
well, she's really good and used to doing illustrations, but she's not used to drawing for games, so all of the assets were like a few thousand pixels too big. Mm. So, uh, yeah, the problem was that the game ran like ass, and I asked my computer side friend to do the thing where he just does some magic and the game just kind of starts working like it's intended. And he did the magic, and the game worked like it's intended. So, huge thanks to him for that. Wouldn't have been able to do that without him. Now, most of the uh, sounds in the game, I think, are from uh, freesound.org. Really good website, definitely recommend it. Also, Free Music Archive, they're like two really good resources for audio stuff for games. Especially if you don't have money to pay people, because they're all creative comments. Yeah, I think like the uh, most interesting part of this for me was making the art style that, like, the art style of Flotte is not very uh, game friendly, like by default. So it was a really interesting challenge to kind of adapt it and tweak the engine in a way where it could display that kind of, you know, overlapping uh, uh, watercolor style. Yeah, I like it. It turned out really separate. well. Uh, yeah. I think, so how, uh, how long what, ago did you work on this? Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, so uh, originally uh, Andrew said, yeah, like, I'll pay you like 150 bucks and just spend like about a weekend's uh, game jam worth of work on it. Uh, but you know, then what happened was the artist saw the developers and went, holy shit, that's so cool. And the developers saw the artist and went, holy shit, that's so cool. I've never had a chance to make a game with like a specifically such a unique artist. <laughs> So everyone just kind of uh, worked on it for two or three months, more than I was intended. Nice. Uh, I think most of it, uh, I didn't actually work in it, it was just kind of in a development hell where I kind of, uh, left it to my friend to make, and then she didn't have a lot of time to work on it, and then the, the artist didn't have a lot of time to draw things, so it just kind of stalled. But yeah, it... Uh, it ended up being done. Uh, the whole thing was published. I think uh, Andrew submitted it to a bunch of competitions and uh, it got accepted to EGX Left Field and it's gonna be shown there in a bit. Nice. Well, we've got about five minutes left if you wanted to pull up your bit of screen share that you were talking about just for this last bit. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, Benny, are you good oh, to yeah. swap over once you get this last mushroom? Yeah, I'm just exploring. I think I explored almost everything. Yeah. All right. Cool. And I will set things up to screen. Yeah. Share. Uh, I'll just spoil the ending. When you collect all of them, uh, it uh, sunset happens, and you're recommended to go home, and you just kind of go home and sleep, and you just work a dream realm where. Uh, the developers, thank you for playing. Nice. Uh, I think, yeah, you're seeing the recursion. Very cool. So, uh, the early versions of it, uh, here are like some early ideas of like competitive mushroom collecting or having a mushroom trip. Uh, or just kind of collecting mushrooms, which is what we ended up doing in the end. Uh, there was also a Mario-like idea, but that also didn't go far. And yeah, like things, uh, we originally wanted to have like a thing where you could actually like, see all of the mushrooms you collected and eat them and have different effects. Uh, and like some of the descriptions kind of imply that, like the, uh, the one that gives you speed or stuff. Yeah, also here's the uh, left field and the thing that there. Yeah, so some other games from this uh, like collab was a uh, game where you assemble creatures out of bits. A game which is kind of just entirely wild. It's a combination of uh, crayon drawings and like uh, Y2K aesthetics. And also a game where you infiltrate Putin's Palace, which is a uh, 
pretty accurate commentary on what's happening in some parts of Russia. Yeah, so or the original comic this is based on is this. And I think you might see some similarities already. Like, it is just a guy who really likes mushrooms. And yeah. he's in a forest. And it's it's basically the exact thing that it was based on. Like, you know, even the uh, the window and, like, the these details, having hand mushrooms on the porch, and, like, uh, drawings of mushrooms on the walls. This guy is just uh, has a really good hobby, and he's really into it. You know, sometimes he eats some of them, sometimes he experiences some interesting things. But yeah, he's just a really cool guy. I really vibe with this character and, like, this whole thing. I do think it's a very interesting sort of case study of a game being used to bring another medium to life. Like, this game is very much that artist's work being made interactable and explorable and playable. Um, and I think that's very, very cool. We don't, especially in students, we don't get to see that a lot. So the fact that you got to contribute and work with all these different people to sort of uh, let this artist's work sort of breathe and then put your own, you know, sort of touches on it and spins on it is really, really cool. Thank you. Yeah, so at the very beginning, it looks kind of like this. And I mean, all of the parts of the game are there, but it uh, is based out of like these sketches that people provided with, so it's not really good looking. At some point, we wanted to have the option of eating mushrooms and tripping out, but you know, eating mushrooms was kind of a cut feature because it didn't really add a lot, and it's about collecting them and not like consuming. Also, yeah, oh, here's like. So nice. Yeah, here's like the uh, ink drawings of the frog that tells you how it likes to be a frog. Uh, and here's some of the pencil drawings. You're kind of just, you know, it has a very cozy vibe to it, I think. It does, yeah. Yeah, uh, also the uh, the idea for having uh, pages that you collect and like note down uh, was partially from like the diaries you have in uh, Night in the Woods where May kind of just documents her day. Also, uh, yeah, this fella, he, like, he likes to write, so I think it's very in character. You just like walk in the forest and document your findings. Right? All yeah. right. Yeah. Perfect. And, uh, Any final closing statements? We have about two minutes left, and our next presenter is on a time schedule. OK, so final statements. Here's what the level looked like in the beginning. It's terrible, it's ugly, but it kind of ended up being like this in the final version. Uh, one thing I want to add is that um, the way the path was laid out is so that no matter where you uh, step onto it, if you follow it in one direction long enough, you will eventually pass through all of the important parts. So you still have the agency of uh, kind of going around and exploring the forest on your own. But if you're ever lost, you can just follow the path and eventually you'll see all of the interesting things. Also, you don't have to collect all of the mushrooms in the forest to finish the game, only some of them that are in the key locations and like a few of the general ones. All yeah. right, thank you so much, Ash. Okay, Thanks for coming. No problem. Again, that was shoot mushroom season that's available on the itch page very fun project there really yeah, nice it's uh it's not sold independently it's only as a part of the uh in the apocalypse x kush bundle but all of the games in it are really good and i recommend you to check it out regardless Alrighty, thanks again ash yeah thanks for having me right, i'm bringing sam in right now oops all right, Sam, you are muted right now, just so you know. But next up is the game Lantern by Sweaters, a.k.a. Sam. Hello. Hey, Sam. I don't know what you're talking about with this game. Right, so what, what do you want to talk about with this game, Sam? You've made a lot of different games already in with your unique style. So why did you choose this one to show off today? Uh, well, it was the only new one that I had. I was going to finish another one before uh, the deadline, but uh, I ended up not doing that. OK, so what about this game do you want to talk about? Uh, I guess the art style. I was inspired by uh, a minute. Uh, you guys can hear me fine, right? 
Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, cool. I, I'm like in a break room right now. That's yeah, I know. I just I want to get as much out of you as I can while you have time to give it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, uh, so it was inspired by Minute. I just like I was playing that game uh, like a bit before uh, making this, and uh, I just absolutely loved the the one bit like top down style, and mm -hmm. I wanted to like kind of capture that without directly copying any assets. Uh, and uh, and I think I did pretty well. I like the uh, like I I a fan of my like uh, what's it even called the light the lighting source and the yeah. yeah just the aesthetic that comes from it. It's actually cheating a bit because it's not uh, it's not like pixel perfect or anything. The uh, the 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 circle is actually uh, has anti aliasing, but I can't turn it off, which is really annoying. <laughs> so I added like. Like kind of like a grid based uh like dithering pattern as well alongside it yeah so how does the game kind of work give me a rundown uh basically it's just a uh just a single like player you've got like like objects you can interact with basically just your lantern and your sword the the lantern just acts like a regular thing it like slows down uh, over time and just sits there like it's really basic math there's like barely any like uh, it's all done by hand, so it's very, like, primitive. Uh, I think I lost my sword. <laughs> and I, I did realize there's one bug where your sword just disappears, yeah. Oh, cool. No idea why. Uh, and, yeah, the sword just basically just acts like a planet, like, orbiting you. Uh, so if you, like, yeah, if you move around like that, you can actually, like, pick up nice. the, the lantern and keep continue swinging the sword. And so you can uh, only swing your sword while your lantern is on the ground, right? Yeah. Nice. That's a nice little gameplay loop there. Yeah, I wanted to like it was for Anthony's uh, in second year's uh, game jam. Oh right? yeah. Uh, and uh, I wanted. Jam. I forget what the it was like. Limitations was the theme, I think. So I wanted to like, I limited myself by making doing it in one bit, and then also like the the players limited because they have to protect their lantern while also having to like toss it on the ground to be able to attack anybody yeah uh, so was this in your own engine again or was this in like unity or something yeah it was my own engine again uh just because it's really easy like at this point it's really easy to like uh put little things together super yeah quickly, so. now that you have it you know yeah yeah fantastic i was kind of sad i missed that game jam some really good stuff came out of that one <laughs> i won first prize first prize what was the prize uh, and it was just a pat on the back for me. Big old kiss on the lips. Yeah. But I was also the only one who submitted anything. Uh, <laughs> I saw some uh, of the other projects that came from it, but I think yours was yeah. the only one that finished on time. Alex is, it looks fantastic. He's still working on it. He did it for, he's working on the tile set for the, uh, Topher's class. Yeah. Uh, oh, so did he, did he multitask? He took... He did the tile set to make his I game. I think so, yeah. I think what he like, used it and modified it. Yeah. I was I gonna do that like for that. this actually. I was gonna like make because I want to eventually like make it an actual like interactive story alongside like kind of like yeah. roguelike rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. As you like go deeper and just like a very basic like dungeon kind of thing. I'm trying to get. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to get the sword to orbit, but I can't get it to work. You should add um, like fire hydrants and and like a like a hose, and then <laughs> make it firefighter themed. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, that's a reference to another game we we had okay. earlier. That's too bad. I, um, I could only catch like 15 minutes of it earlier. Yeah, I'm glad you could make it like right now. Yeah, I had to. I'd be like, uh, can I take my break at three o'clock exactly? And can I have the break room to myself? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, what were some of the like challenges that you had, or was this like a really easy game to put together for you, and you had it, no difficulties at all? It was pretty easy. Usually, I get like at least a little bit frustrated doing certain coding things, but I mm -hmm. don't think I ever did. Uh, uh, it was like pretty straightforward. I think like the biggest challenge was just doing like the art. I like spent a lot of time on the character before I did anything else. He's uh, adorable. Because I really wanted to like make it fluid without like using too many frames to kind of limit it myself again uh, yeah and so there's like it's kind of in a way that all the transition frames kind of like just you don't really need the transition just each like kind of state has its own 
like cycles and they they sort of flow together pretty easily mm -hmm. i like that the lantern is the health as well i think that's cool yeah i it wasn't originally i, I was originally just going to get them to go towards you and you couldn't see anything without the lantern mm -hmm. but uh but it it kind of like worked out a lot nicer to have them go to the lantern uh nice like it, thematically yeah yeah and it has like i think it's also kind of inspired by uh over the garden wall where oh my god with the lantern uh you have to keep the lantern lit by like getting the mm -hmm. oil from the branches uh, it is time for a rewatch it is rewatch over the garden wall season people october that it is. it's october it, it's perfect me and, my, me and my significant other will be rewatching it uh hopefully yeah I'm starting that with a friend soon too. <laughs> See, I, I absolutely love that. Love that show. So the, yeah. yeah, even like the the I didn't make his head a triangle, but uh, I could have, and it would have been like you way more yeah. similar. I think you also put significant limitation on yourself for this game by not including any cats. I think that's a first for you, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Um, I think that was would have been a time constraint. I think I could have just added it in the game over screen. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I like I like you and your cats. But yeah, de they definitely wouldn't have shown up eventually. I would have had like a cat enemy. There's no way I wouldn't include them. <laughs> it, just the, the same... temptation is far too strong. Yeah, the same sprite as well. As I've used it in like three games now. <laughs> is it is that the same as the one in? Um, was it the developer one that you made? Yeah, yeah, I made it, it for the. Some... I made it for the cat throw game. That I made for like Ali's class and oh yeah first year one of the assignments where you just toss a cat <laughs> everything <laughs> is cat violence but uh it's like it's like the what's it called like the night game where you like it's like super frustrating and you like fall down all the way oh Basically jump, that. King? jump yeah. king yeah but I used used the, I had a cat themed version of that and I used that in the design week challenge and I used it again in my uh my narrative game last year as well. Nice. I remember that narrative game. That was a good one. I'm just trying to gather up as many. All as right. As so make sure that you guys check out uh, this game on the itch as well as uh, are the rest of your games available on itch, Sam? Or are they yeah, all, mostly new grounds? No, only only one is on the only Ketris. Yeah. So make yeah. sure you check out some of Sam's games. He's pretty talented, pretty talented. He's an incredibly talented developer. He's thrown together a lot of really cool, mostly cat violence themed games um that are super fun to play cat violence themed games makes me sound pretty bad well it's not it's not what it sounds like it's not i mean you, you know it's a lure you guys gotta check it out for yourself to understand what i mean <laughs> and i'm working on another one it's a chuzzles clone like a like a match three game uh but also featuring cats I'm trying not to make it violent, but it's really tempting because they yeah. kind of explode. The temptation uh, is there. Yeah. All right. Anything else to say? Not really. No. Yeah. Beautiful little game. I love it. Super fun and cutesy. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Sam. Uh, I hope we didn't waste Thank too much of your me. break time. You did not. No. I still have like ten minutes. All right, nice. Oh, someone has a question um, about how the how the sword uh, orbits the character. Uh, basically, uh, depending on who asked the question, I don't have Twitch open anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a guy named Love and Halo. I believe that is Kalen, our new GDS member. Oh, okay. Uh, it is basically uh, it just points the vector at the player and just accelerates it in that direction. So that's that's like all there is to it, uh, and so that that adds that nice like like minute style like where if you just shoot in a direction it'll like go forward and come back. I think minute just continues forward and then disappears, but uh, I wanted that kind of like like style of like using a sword, and then uh, but then also if you like step sideways you can kind of walk around in a circle and have it like orbit around you, uh, which was. Originally, I was going to try and make it do that always whenever you shot it, but I, I liked like the you could kind of like have a bit more like skill in the being able to shoot it precisely. But yeah, pretty, pretty simple stuff. It's like really, I just have like a single vector library that I use, and that's it. We got a very, we got a cool, 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 cool. Okay, response. yeah, I'll see you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming, Sam. It was good to talk to you.
All right. Uh, we got about oh. four minutes before. It was a short game, but it was a beautiful game. I love Sam's work. Yeah, I'm gonna be right back uh, because I'm gonna go refill my water. I think. And then... Okay, we're gonna have a mini five minute break. All right, I have fixed. I have also fixed that typo uh, for the first glass that we had. Uh, you know what? I'll may as well just do this. All right. We've got two minutes in chat, and I've got a very important question for everybody. Mm -hmm. The Popeye's chicken sandwich or the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich? Which one is better? It's a heated debate. I think everyone's wrong, but, like, whatever. I just need to spam it in the chat which one's better, or if you haven't had it. God, it's just so wrong. It's just so wrong. It is not Popeye's. The Popeye's chicken sandwich is overrated. It's trash. Chicken is not chicken, Sam the Bird Boy. You're just wrong, okay? <laughs> You're just wrong! Okay. I'm not crazy. I've had the Popeye's chicken sandwich, and at the same... I, I, was, I was going nuts over this, because I'd, you know, I'd never had the Popeye's chicken sandwich, and everyone's telling me how good it is. So I went out to the Chick-fil-A, and I bought a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, and then I bought a Popeye's chicken sandwich, and I had them side by side, and it was like no contest. Yeah, but were you... But you're still in america yeah i am exactly what does that matter what's the, i feel what's like that it matters matter? <laughs> oh no i don't support chick see i have um i have two gay siblings and so every time i go to chick-fil-a i pay the tax to them i give them each five dollars uh because you know you, you shouldn't support chick-fil-a but they have really good food oh remind me of like an episode in like the good place where like they go like it's like you eat a chicken sandwich that means you hate gay people but it's delicious <laughs> the very specific scene that, that i'm thinking of all right we are at the five minute mark we can drag in um uh nah, nah, nah. or really i i keep saying replayability but it's not because that's wrong uh Enjoy the flavor of hate. Do you want me to drag them in? Yeah, can you please drag them in? Yeah. Welcome. Hello? You are muted right Excuse now. Excuse me, it's, uh, it's making me it's making me push to talk. And oh, I oh okay. Oh, no. That's interesting. <laughs> so that means... Oh, I can check the stream, though. I'm on browser discord, which uh, works very well. So this game, this game is, uh, uh, it was, uh, became a harrowing pick after many of the last games, because this is also a top-down shooter where yeah, you can that. orbit your bullets. Whoa! You can use the arrow keys to aim. Are you saying that you have no originality whatsoever and are just copying the guy before you? I didn't know about that game. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm sorry. I'm totally kidding. No, this game, uh, this game has uh, a gimmick. 
this game has a few gimmicks. It looks gorgeous, by the oh, way. Oh my god. Thank you. I mean, it'll I be hard in the music and stuff. I kind of like... So, is the background just transparent? And it, like... Uh, hmm? So, like, I think it's, like, the background transparent, and then that just shows the background of the web page, because I really like that. Uh, that isn't how it is. It's just the same image. Um, oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, that's a, that is a cool effect. I appreciate I, it. I like how it blends... Yeah, it just blends right into the web page. Mm -hmm. I really love that. You can, like, aim with the arrow keys, you know? I, I know. I tried to like float into the area and like you. So yeah, talk a little bit about this game and like the different mechanics it has and like how it, you know, works. Okay, so like a uh, part of this game, you don't have to kill the enemies. Oh. In fact, you can't kill the enemy. Uh, so if you go down there, that's a wall. I made this game in seven days because I was working on my long-term projects and I was annoyed with how long they were taking. So I wanted to just finish something. Just for the pure quickly. catharsis? Yeah. Uh, press press the arrow keys repeatedly while floating to uh, move. You can like bounce around. I really like how this sort of has- uh, The movement keys, the movement. Like oh, Space see. Invader vibes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they, they shoot at you and there's like little blocks sure. between you and them, kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the flying looks so fun too. It's, it's not. This game, <laughs> uh, this game, I made this. Uh, I made this with this very specific audience in mind, which was sickos. This is a game for sickos. <laughs> I, I am not. <laughs> the uh, the exploding cool. animation is right. sick. Uh, thank you. I worked, I worked hard on today. All right, congratulations, you've won. You found four library cards. There's four no, library cards. You need to cards. find. You need to find all four library cards to get the true ending. And therein lies the truth of this game, which reality. Is, yeah, which is um, uh, I guess I can spoil it, which is. Um, that whenever you shoot an enemy, it goes to the same position it was at, but in the next level. Oh. And so you can use that to solve puzzles, because, like, the enemies shoot, shoot like, bullets that destroy blocks that you wouldn't be able to pass otherwise. And you so, like, can shoot little floating platforms that'll then move to the next level in that area, so you can cross over to a thing. So when Benny just destroyed that enemy, it's going to appear in that same spot in the next level? Is that right? Yes, it is correct, yeah. Interesting. That's, oh, there it is! Oh, that's super cool! That's nifty! That's damn cool! Yeah. And uh, this game this game is really hard. I, I couldn't beat it until like a few days after release. I made it easier for myself. That's nice. Wait, what do I do on that? On that platform? Also, I'm getting pawn Oh, uh, yeah, that. I thought I fixed that. I thought I put, like, things no, in No, it was. Uh, that's intended. It's just nice watching Benny get pwned. This game, uh, this game received, uh, was very divisive when I released it. It had got a lot of, uh, five and one star reviews, which, uh, that's that's pretty much intended. That yeah. that is not intended. That I'm sorry about that. Uh, don't apologize. It's pure entertainment factor. Uh. Oh, so what were some of your uh, like I don't know intentions or inspirations going into this? Like what were you, what what did you want to make? And do you feel like you uh, well, I don't know hit that note? What I wanted to do was have you ever played La Mulana? No. Uh, it's a game, it's a really hard game with a lot of weird, obscure, puzzly mechanics of like uh, giving you vague hints as to what to do and then you have to do some obtuse bullshit somewhere entirely different in the game. You have to like, like pause the game so that your character like falls asleep in the idle animation in a specific place and then that unlocks the next area. You gotta plug in your controller to the player two slot. Yeah, basically. Like that kind of weird obtuse puzzle sol metagame puzzle solving to figure out the mechanics. Nice. Was like I, I, kinda, I, yeah. I do kind of like that stuff. I don't know. I think I wanted to do. No. 
can you confirm, is that character a little Among Us, or am I crazy? Uh, it's a little guy. It's a little guy. He's just a little dude. Not everything mm -hmm. is Among Us. No, Among Us. <laughs> so what were some, uh, I know you said this game was in seven days, and you did it mm -hmm. to sort of step away from the more challenging, longer projects you had. But what were some of the, like, challenges or obstructions you still faced when you were making this game? Ah, uh, well, like, this, this level swap mechanic was annoying as hell to get working. Because mm -hmm. uh, well, the way it works is that, like, every level just exists, like, 5,000 tiles apart from each other. And so whenever you move an enemy, it just, its X value jumps a thousand points. So it's like, it's much simpler under the hood than it seems. It's, uh... Interesting. That is very cool. And just cause like with parenting objects, other objects, it just wasn't working properly. You found it, you found it, Benny. There is literally an arrow pointing to it. You can make it, I believe in you. I don't know if he's supposed to go this way, but it's really fun to see him try. Mm -hmm. I believe. I think it is possible. Um, there is like a... Uh, this game... I don't know. This isn't a very fun game to watch. It's just... It's I beg to differ. It's a deranged <laughs> trial and <laughs> error slog for this crazy people. This is incredible people. to watch. I oh, by the totally way. disagree with you. <laughs> oh, by the way. Uh, like, uh, like spin around the arrow keys really fast and shoot. And you can like curve oh. your shots like that. To, like... That's so cool. That's such. I saw it before, and I thought it was like a gravity thing. But so when you're moving your reticle, you can curve the bullets. Mm -hmm. That's so. That's super sweet. Originally, it was w even worse the controls because like aiming was mapped to movement as well, so you could only aim where you were moving, which uh, everyone who played it hated and begged me to change it. I wish so, I could play with, like. I wish I could play with a controller and have two joysticks. To, uh, oh, I it. think I, I think I planned control and support and never got around to it. <laughs> Glittering Gray has a question of if the enemies loop all the way through, so if you killed the enemies on level 4, would they go back to level 1? Yes, they do. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's your answer. Um, I feel like I feel like you've seen pretty much everything this game has to offer. <laughs> To get Listen, uh, we have seen everything this game has shown, and if you have more to say, we'll hear it. But right now, pure entertainment factor of watching Benny struggle. I've well, got to tell you. I have a much more... This was, I have a game that is also played in the web browser that I could send you that might be much more fun to watch. I think we'll stick to this game for now, just oh. for focus sake, unfortunately. Oh, well. It's a cool game. You can dropkick little guys. Uh, be sure to check out his Dropkick game and this game, both available through his Itch account, which is linked, you know, in the in the uh, Twitch thing. The Dropkick one is in progress and restricted, but you can check out other games. You can check out that text adventure I made and that RPG I made. Sounds fun. Really All right, uh, anything else to say about this or maybe long-term projects that uh, people can look forward to from you in the future? Uh, look look forward to Detective Dropkick and uh, Slaughter Abroad at the Temple of God and the Lonesome Journey of a Sinister Man. Come that in is a kick-ass name. <laughs> Slaughter yeah, Abroad at the Temple of God. You could be playing it now, but instead you're playing this. Well, you're the one who sent this game in. So. I know, I sent it in and I regret it. I didn't know there would be so many top-down shooters. This is fantastic. <laughs> I, I don't think it's cluttered at all. I, this has just enough uniqueness, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Plus, oh my god. I just it's really hard. Discover. It's not a fun game to play. I, to I disagree. You have to be... It's, it's... <laughs> you have to have a lot of patience. But I have the patience play. to watch Benny play it. Funny, the people, yeah, and so like you see, like when you move enemies to certain locations, they're much more annoying there, and now yeah. you have to deal with them. As you I really, progress. I do like that idea of just like, you know, the, I, the can I even get there? You're right. Oh my god. Hmm? 
your Those actions in one level like directly affect what happens in like the next levels and then that affects like secrets and discovery which is super cool thank you it's, it's like then... you're designing the game while you're playing yeah exactly that's actually a really neat idea you fortunately but... you fortunately keep all items on deck because i couldn't figure out how to program it so you did it <laughs> what do you mean i collected zero out of four i i got a key but i don't know what key yeah you got a key that's not a library card. oh my god you're only halfway there benny no you can make it you can't make it i don't even remember the solution to this game it is <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those games, you know. There's nothing on this level right. anymore. <laughs> oh, wait, look, there's if there is there. Think... any other comments about, um, you know, the, the game and your process in making it? Um, it was made in like almost a fugue state over seven <laughs> days of just sort of, of just sort of making it. I limited. I I set out like limitations at the beginning of like there will be exactly yeah. four levels. And there, there will be there will be four levels, levels and I will hate them. Mm -hmm. There will be four levels and none of them will be fun. That's, That's level fantastic. Design. I don't know. I disagree with you. I think this game is fantastic. I think its difficulty is beautiful and its design is you know elegant. What, Chris? And also, I want to watch Benny play it for six you, straight hours. You know what, Chris? You down, next year, you, you can down. you can just do all the streaming and <laughs> all the I can play. Play. If you no, scroll I, down the comments, you can see that all of them are about make it easier. Yeah. Jokes aside, I do think, I do, like, genuinely think it's a very good game. And I do think there's a lot of really good design, really good aesthetic, and, like, super <laughs> cool ideas in here. And I don't think you should beat yourself down for it. Just, I mean, it is difficult to play, but I do think that's intended, um, you know? It's not difficult oh. because you suck. It's difficult because <laughs> you made it that way. Oh, I, uh, I also, what's it called? I posted it on Newgrounds. And it has a one star on Newgrounds and a lot of angry comments. About what the fuck is this? And put in a mute button for some reason. I think It'll the happen. mute. I think the mute. I think the music is the only good thing about it. Actually, it is pretty poppin'. All right. Any I final statements it. on the game before we move on to the next one? We have about one I think minute. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for showing this off. All right. Uh, our next one will be Prison Alchemist Shop. Which I need to do we have anyone to talk about with this? I don't remember if this ended the thing. Anywhere. I don't seem to be here, but that's okay. Uh, do you have the game installed? Or not installed, but I have it. Let me change the thing. Hang on. I'm remembering to do things. What's your favorite game been so far, Benny? If you had to uh, just put forward like a totally biased opinion. Uh, not Power Lines. That's fine. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be Power Lines. Power Lines wasn't my favorite game that we've seen so far. <laughs> and I'm just gonna do this while we still have a little bit. Not late. I'm not late. There we go. I'm gonna wait for the game to load up, and let me also close Steam. <laughs> yeah, which was your favorite, Chris? I'm not I don't know. Of... I've I've liked I've liked a little bit of all of them, and I know that's like a cop out answer, but like so many of them <laughs> had like so many of them had like such like th there's no one game that didn't impress me in some way, to be honest. Um, someone who doesn't, I really, think, as someone who doesn't no, really like top-down um, bullet hells and things like that. Um, yeah, I didn't. I'm going to be honest. I didn't enjoy most of those because I'm like, I don't <laughs> want to play this, but I have to. I think uh, for me, No Water in Hell, just because it is a game that I saw last year. Just like the the, the game. they've made so many big steps in it. it was I was I was really impressed to see it again and oh. to see the ways it changed. I really enjoyed that. I wasn't expecting this game to be in first person. If I'm gonna be honest. Uh, poison potion. I'm oh, you're not streaming it. to the Discord, by the way. Sorry. No. That's fine. Oh, am that I is an adorable on, am cat. Am I streaming on Twitch though? 
You're streaming on Twitch, but uh, I can't see it on my little Discord, so I've got a little delay. Push okay, sweet. Somewhere. Place potions here. Alright, this is Prism's Alchemist Shop. You can grab this on the itch.io as well. Black Rose, a Monster Bone, and a Purple Mushroom. Do I have any money? I do. Okay, I'm gonna buy a Purple Mushroom. Do I just stand on it? Hang on, I don't... Hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go very quickly look at the controls. Left click to pick up and drop. Press E to interact with buttons. Left click to... Oh my god, there's like a cat. cat. He's so much I don't more know high if... poly than everything else. Yeah, I don't know if that's like an asset that was taken or if it was if it's an asset that someone here made. Wow, that's really that's a really good cat. All right, I got a Oh, it's over here. I'm so I'm like what? How many did I buy? All right, a poison mushroom. In. Into the communal cauldron. I think you gotta drop it in the top. You gotta drop it in the top. That's why there's the stairs there. Ooh, the oh, water's nice. turned purple. I like that. Uh, I don't want to. Uh, this so, there. that's a neat idea. Monster it's like a point. Minecraft crafting table, but it's like you know you gotta physically put the stuff in there for them to appear in your UI. That's nice. A black rose. They all appear at the end there. Oh, they they come out of a little pipe. That's why. Yeah. And a monster bone. This one. Benny, you only... Oh no, I you stepped have... on all the other buttons. Oh no. You have 80 gold left, Benny. I know. You're I running out of money. I just tried to make one potion. There we go. And Blue up. the black rose, which I think is this one. No. No. There we go. How do I make? How do I mix? I think on the I think on the wall there's um ah press E to brew potion. What about potion that? Back at the base of the cauldron. Huh? Where'd the potion go? Oh, there's <gasps> another pipe. Another tube. Whoa! All right, I placed the potion. I don't think there's a table here. It's funny. Okay. I did it! A nice. Health potion. I need two health potions. You now have 136.9 money. Oh, I can upgrade. Uh, I can. Inc I can. I can give myself discounts. Nice. This reminds me of a game. I wonder if this was based off one of the game jams we did, because actually Matt from my Powerlines team made a game very similar to this at a past game jam. A lot less complex, obviously. Health potion, phoenix feather, and two red flowers. Okay, I'm gonna need a phoenix flower. Oh, I already have one of those. Okay, that's fine. But I need like four red flowers. You're wasting your money. No, I need to make two potions. This, uh, your mother and I put you through brewing college, and this is what you spend your money on? Don't worry, Phoenix I'll... flowers? Phoenix. You know, do you want a health potion or not? Okay. Eh. Brew that potion. Mm, another one, though. This is a very nice and casual game. There hasn't, there isn't much uh, else information on other itch pages, so uh, I don't really It's like a witchy overcooked, which I kind of like. Very, ooh, imagine if this was like multiplayer and you're just yeah, frantically that'd be fantastic. Potions. That'd be hilarious. Bumping into other first-person witches. Oh my god. Whoa, that's a once-in-a-lifetime stack right there. One. Pick up the cat. I don't think I can. Sell the cat. Potion seller. It's not in. You gotta you gotta adjust it. It's not resting properly. Okay. 
What? Maybe take it out and put it back in. Oh, there we go. Out. A stamina potion. I cannot pick up the cat. I can press E on it. I don't think I'm doing can anything you, though. Can you punch him? Wait. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's make a stamina potion. Bottled slime and a yellow flower. I think I already bought a yellow flower from Brian. Yellow flower! Oh no, don't fall into the flames. Oh my god, I can't. Haha. <laughs> okay, and a slime. Bottled slime. 485. Look at that little slime. Burn. A stamina potion. And let's sell the slime. You are making the money, Benny. Another poison potion. All right, let's look at our skill points. We can more discounts. All right. What's that little blue ruin or like the blue glowy thing? Uh, this thing? Yeah, I wonder what that is. I'm not sure. It sure is pretty, is what it is. Maybe that's what's. Maybe that's the thing that we're trying to make gold for. Yeah, we're trying to appease our crystal god. And a monster bone. And a purple rose. Maybe I should just walk on like all of these things so I don't have to like. All right. Order ingredients like Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, exactly. Alright. I, I wish we had someone to talk to about this game because it is very pretty. A mana potion. Very well put together. Two mana potions. Check it. A mana potion is. Blue flowers. I need two of them. Oh. All right, we're just gonna. Oh my God! What does this cost? Your discount. I don't know what's happened to it. All right, we're just gonna do this. This is how you Benny, should buy things in real life. You should your just... money. Don't worry about it. We're gonna make all that money back. Your college savings. We're gonna make all this money back. You put it all in Dogecoin! Alright, here's one of the mana potions. I still wish you could kill the- you could put the cat in the potion. Nope. The- the potion of cat- Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> You've made an impossible mess. Another blue flower. There we go. Oh no, I gotta click the button. Eh. There we go. Done. Perfect. Ah. Uh. That's one. And here's two. And I need a poison potion. See, walking on all those buttons were worth it. Now I can just pick up this mushroom and not purchase it. Yep, these are you investments. Need two, but you need two mushrooms, Benny. So you gotta press the button. I anyway. did press them all. I did press. Oh, them there's all another ones. one there. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. I thought I, I thought I had like a gotcha. I thought you missed that one. And then I also need a bone. I got a bone to pick with you. Not anymore. It's being put in the cauldron. Oh God, my bone. Yep, that's Chris's bone. Ah, I paid good money for that. Don't worry, there's another one in the pile. But we gotta use that one too. I'm interested to see if they continue this game. Like if they start adding more potions and stuff. It's very casual, I like it. Very nifty, yeah. Come on. Okay, no. I wonder if, how well this would work in VR like having all these random things and like theme and like maybe you need to like mix it as well because right now I'm just yeah hey, that would be pretty fun for VR actually there you go and another one 
Boom. All right, let's look at our skills. I can also increase the amount I sell, or I can keep getting more discounts. More discount. I wonder what funky. Oh, oh my boy. god, those look numbers! At, What's look happening? At those numbers. You've broken it. You're saving fractions of a cent. I know. This is the gold. The gold is the real Dogecoin. It's up by. Yeah, I'm, I'm up. I'm up by a sixteenth of a cent. I've made a huge profit. I think you were supposed. Oh, to I had to something... also put a phoenix feather in. Yeah, thank God it didn't just burn those materials for you, or you would have been screwed. There we go. That is a totally valid potion. Hmm. Potion master. A poison potion. Oh no, that's a stamina potion. That's just a yellow flower. No, it's a yellow flower in this in this bottle of slime. This is a very cute bottle of slime. Now it's gone. Oh my god, look at my pile of ingredients is practically gone. Yeah, but your money is, you, you're in the money. You got the big money right now. No. But it's not just about the money, Benny. It's about the Mets, baby. It's the Mets, baby. Let's go. All right, let's, let's get more discount. Let's see how absurd those numbers can get. Oh, that's fine. Just the mana potion. I'm out of ingredients. Can't believe this. Boom. Very casual. Would love to see like more, even more potions. Okay. We got it. More discounts. Let's just fill up this room with stuff. This will be fine. This is fine. Alright, we got about two minutes left. Uh, this was Prism's Alchemist Shop. Okay. All right, we got. Next game is Uga. I don't know if we have anyone to talk about this one either. Nobody's coming to the waiting room. I don't uh, know. No, this game is unlike the other ones. Isn't available on Itch, but it is available on uh, Game Bite. Game Bite. Game Bite. Game Jolt. Sorry, don't know what I'm talking about. It's is that the Game other Jolt. link? I do yeah. have a link. Look at that. It's so in... there is a separate link beneath itch just for this game. He's very special. And I will now play this game. I do like his icon of burnt toast. Or their icon, rather. Oh my god, you just missed this gun. Oh my god, hang on. I gotta... I gotta start this game again to, like, show. Because <laughs> this is great. Uh, can I share on my screen as well? Oh no, don't look at that. The infinite void. <laughs> That's a great opener. I don't think you got it on the Twitch stream, but I. Oh, there it is. Alright, let's play this game. Thank you. You control Uga with WASD or the arrow keys, and you can jump with space W or R. Right, we've got a side-scrolling platformer now. That's different from top-down shooters, Benny. Throwing spears is important. Press left shift to throw a spear at the green switch. Oh, I have a limited amount of spears. Can I pick these spears up? Nope, I can't. Okay, I have a limited amount of spears. I should be more careful. I was just gonna, I was just gonna spam the spears. Wait, what? Try riding a you spear can, across the You can ride your spear? Uh-oh. See if you can... Hang on. 
Oh, I gotta, like, walk as well. Can you, like, throw a spear at a wall and then just stand on that spear? Someone's here. Yeah! You can. Look at that. I'm a genius! I do like One spears. Final move is Uga. You can press control to pole vault. Whoa. Oh, no. Uh. <laughs> I have to go through everything again. That was perfect. I'm like, oh my god, look at this cool thing you can do. You fell, like, perfectly into that trap. Alright, so we've got switches, we've got spear riding, we've got spear climbing, and we've got pole vaulting, and we've also got spikes that kill you. Yeah, I gotta collect all these spears. I like that the spears are both coins and ammunition. So make sure you're standing on the little blue block there. Yeah. Whee! That was fun. Another control game is to jump with K if there's spears with K. Ooh! Left hand support. The big meat! The this spear meat is the meat. Meat. Gorgeous. Oh my god, look at that nostalgic level setup. I like that. This author is Burnt Toast Studios Ash, and they don't have an itch. Their link is at the bottom of the Switch stream at the Game Jolt uh, site. Penny, you're almost out of spears. I don't know if you're gonna make it. I mean, I'm on a time crunch. What? That's just rude. What are you talking about? Alright, those little dark orange ones are not solid ground, it appears. Oh, that's a cheese and a half. Oh, is that little orb talking to you? Yeah. It's a, uh... It's a hey, listen. Oh, oh I just realized this is this stuff on the There's the meat. What? Don't scream at me, cat. I also do not have chat open, so you cannot see. Uh. It's just people posting the author's link and stuff, which is good. But I do also like it looked like ah. in the map there was a difference between levels that you've done perfect, like you collected all the meat and stuff, and there's a there's levels that you've just completed and levels you haven't completed, which I think is a nice touch. No, don't die, Benny. Don't don't die. Sustenance. See, you got three out of three meatlets there. And see, yeah, that one's cool. perfect now. Yeah. So you got a little gold mark on it. Hey! What did I say about scratching me? Ah! That's beautiful work, Benny. Wow. Oh, wait, no. wait, what? There are six? Hang on. We're doing that level again. He's gonna find all the little meats. Oh, I think Try climbing the wall. Yeah. Oh, there's spears. You're out of spears! Oh, you're fucked. Oh, I can't pull vault either if we got those spears. Hmm. Oh, I know. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you ride that spear to the left there. Or maybe there's something... Kill jump, nice work. This is very stressful holding down the button to Wait. Wait, how do I get in? Must the hole. That's a good question. Alright, th this game's got secrets. Maybe there's something off to the right? I don't know how you would get to it. Like up there? Yeah. There's something up there, obviously. 
busted axe. Maybe there's like another mechanic that we don't know about. Perhaps. We can Oh, okay, I see. I see. I'm gonna do that. Oh, nifty. I want but I'm out of spears. Oh. Hang on. So you have to do this super timed. Mm hmm. Wow, the difficulty definitely just ramped up quite a bit. I can definitely make it up there, but I gotta. Gotta time this. Okay, I, like I, got, I gotta jump on, on like, the, the final platform. This game just became like Super Meat Boy status. What? Ah. Oh. Look at that. Look how hard that is. Okay. Wow. He is saying sustenance. Dang. I shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Sus I have to, like,. There we go. Oh no, it's gonna beat me. Oh yeah, it is oh, no. like super meat one. <laughs> no, I keep like sticking it like a little bit too high up. Come on. I believe. Oh yeah, Kyle's got a point. Uh, put those ladder walls first and then go back and shoot that so you can climb. You're right. Okay, cool. Nice, 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 nice. Apron. Oh no! <sighs> like a second. I don't think you can make it with that. No. I think if you could pick up the wall spears, you know what I mean? Then you could retry without resetting. Okay, that, that works. But, the dip, but that would get rid of so much difficulty. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like half puzzle, half platformer. Maybe you have to... No! You fail! That one second! Oh. <laughs> We're just gonna do it. He's going. You're not. You don't have enough time though. Ah. You have to double jump to get that there. You have to put them beforehand. No, I believe. Oh. <laughs> it's just in the wall. I believe. I believe. Okay. I gotta. I gotta do it when it's like falling, and not because my legs don't reach where my head is and where I'm throwing the spear. You are correct. This is this is great. Yeah, a lot a lot of this game showcase has been Benny Payne Simulator. A lot of it has been. This is the final game. We laugh with his pain, not at his pain, right guys? <laughs> with his pain, uh... not at his pain. <laughs> the game showcase ends when Benny beats this level not before. Well, the president's spoken. What? <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't. No, I did it though. I was cheating. <laughs> okay, let's go. Again. <laughs> That's some massive bullshit. Oh, I'm in tears. <laughs> oh my god, this is horrible. I totally did it. That wasn't my fault. I got pushed out. Oh my Christ, now I am laughing at your pain. <laughs> Okay, I think I know what I have to do, and I kind of stupid, but you have to do it like that. I know what I must do. 
but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Ends the stream. <laughs> I know what I have to just do. Turns on, yeah, it just turns off the stream. <laughs> I know what I have to do. He did it! He won! He did it. Oh my god. No pressure. Oh no, did I fuck up? Do you have to pull vault all the way up? No, I didn't fuck up. You totally do! Oh no! <laughs> uh no. It's so What is this level? Everything that came before it! <laughs> Did they put like the last secret level like in front on accident or something? Like this is hard. <laughs> oh, it's so funny though. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Such a good time with this. Oh. I do. I can't do the other levels until I beat this level though. This is. This is the perfect way to end the stream. This is exactly what we needed. Oh <laughs> Alright, um... What's the schedule like? <laughs> I think that's... I think we're good. I think... Uh... Oh, don't worry, this is level editor. Files get oh there's a level editor holy crap that's dope that's really cool uh, we didn't get to show off half of what that game has to offer because we were so busy getting thrashed by how difficult it was uh, but yeah we got some really nifty ads on that website too yeah go back to those ads Benny I want to talk about those I already closed the page if I'm gonna be honest I like those <laughs> those were cool very school friendly <laughs> all right um that was pretty much the end uh of the game showcase thank you everyone for joining us uh this is a little bit early I shouldn't say starting soon either ignore that well uh thank you all for joining us uh if you haven't already uh go be sure to go and check Check those uh, games in the Itch Collection, uh, as well as uh, Ugo, which we just played on Game Jolt. Uh, both these links are in the description here. Uh, and that is our Fall 2021 Game Showcase. We have a lot. That was a lot of games. That was a lot of games. Yeah. Special thanks. Thank you very much to everyone who joined and got to speak uh, and talk about their games. And thanks to everyone who submitted a game. Uh, Remember, there are no like requirements for submitting a game aside from being in Sheridan or being in the game design program. So if you're a year one and you've just made something that you're a little proud of and want to show it off, you're totally welcome to do that. We have many game showcases mm -hmm. coming throughout the year, usually one per semester. Yeah, we'll be um, doing, we'll be for sure, uh, the main one that we're going to be doing next uh, that you can 100% confirm and put on your calendar if you want to submit something, it will be the one at the end of the year in winter 2022. Uh, so yeah, that will. So yeah, uh, day the, day of the devs will come to you from Jeff, not from us. Yeah, night of loving devs, night of loving devs, it happens at a different time, and is yeah. not affiliated with unless it's in person. Then we will be there and like give food to you guys. But yeah. that's only if it happens in winter. Uh, then we will exist. I'm pretty sure that as well. Uh, oh god. Uh, I, I can see Benny's, so Benny's still streaming to me on Discord, and it's showing his Twitch outline right now, and it's showing me that he's subbed to Amaranth in the corner. I am not. This is recommended channels. I'm just kidding. Channels. It's in recommended. But, uh, this I is recommended channels. Excuse me? This I, is look, the GDS charity channel. Maybe it was a little bit of slander, but it was pretty funny. Um, thank you to everyone who joined and, and was like watching in the stream and throwing stuff into chat. It was great talking with y'all and interacting. Um... And we don't really have anything else to stay on the matter. Play those games for yourself. Spread the word. Yeah. Um, and the next thing that see we see if do... you can beat that level that got Benny just oh totally God. stopped. I like, what? It's awful. It was. It, it's. It's one of those where like, one of those like difficult platforming levels where just like, the only way to beat the level is to basically is to one hundred percent the level. And I raw hate those. Raw skill, baby. Raw skill. I hate those. 
All right, thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah, that's and that gonna was be the it for end our of stream. our stream. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, we will see you hopefully another time, in another day. I think in the next thing, place, the next thing, in another doing, lifetime. Next thing we're doing is, I think, a league. I don't. Know. Oh yeah, we've got a league tournament. Uh, make sure we can do advertisements for stuff that's happening. That was yeah, we've got a league tournament coming up soon. Next week is a Splitgate game night, which I'm super hyped for. Download Splitgate on Steam, and we're going to be doing some Splitgate custom matches. Those are going to be super, super fun. That game is a lot of fun to just mess around with a bunch of people on. Um, and then week after that, we've got the League tournament coming up. Make sure that if you want to play League in a tournament setting, you get your friends together and you sign up for that as soon as possible so we can start sorting out the teams. Those tournaments are always super fun to watch and super fun to play in, as well as super fun to cast, even though I don't even like League. So, like, that's how fun they are. So, oh, yeah. And we're going to be putting together an interest poll pretty soon for what other tournaments we might want to throw together because there's a lot of talk about, like, what games people might be interested in. So if you're someone who really likes, for instance, Apex Legends and you want to see Sheridan put together an Apex Legends event... We're going to be putting a poll together for stuff like that. If you want to see different games that haven't been like represented in our game nights and our tournaments yet, that's going to be what that's for. Because mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to put together more events based around more games, but we need to know what people are playing so that we have like good audience turnout yeah. so all our work you know, goes somewhere. I would recommend Warframe, but you can't really do a... Uh... Yeah, you can't really, <laughs> you can't really do a game night with Warframe. 64-hour um... Warframe grind session. Um but yeah, that's about all we have. Um, we're super excited. Uh, the semester has been going really well for us, and we've been having a lot of great turnout from you guys at like the, the, the game nights and the tournaments and all that. So we're really excited yeah. to keep going throughout the semester. Um, Me and Chris will be here to help you cast and be on Twitch. That is our job. That is our job description. We're streamers. We stream. We're pro streamers. We're pro streamers, actually. We're pro streamers. Sponsored by G Fuel. Don't forget to use your new Twitch boosters on Sheridan GDS. You can't, uh -huh. because we're not affiliated. We don't have that kind of power. If we did, I could put up polls and shit, but I can't do that. Oh, my God. All right, that's going to be it for us. Right. Thanks, guys. Bye.